wonders, and welcome back to the table. Good to have you back. Good to be back. Uh, one brief bit of housekeeping I want to take care of right away. Uh, yep. So when I was creating Dagon's character sheet, I accidentally added an evocation that was for a higher level. Uh, mostly because when I looked at it, I'm like, that can't possibly be for a higher level. Because all of these other ones are ridiculously broken. But don't worry, I have gotten rid of, uh, what what was it? Life Drinker. Life Drinker, which is the thing that added my charisma score additionally to my uh, attacks. It was a level 12 spell was yeah, the problem. Yeah, apparently it was level 12, and there is it does not look like a level 12. I think my eyes just kind of glanced over it. But don't worry. Uh, I have instead taken Agonizing Blast, which adds my charisma score to each time my Eldritch Blast hits, so now we have an even more broken ability. <laughs> so that that's fixed. Hex but, Drinker, but, completely but, balanced. But hey, but hey... Now at least we know that it's on uh, Eldritch yeah. Blast. Yeah, it's on Eldritch Blast now. I also have a little bit of housekeeping to do because apparently uh, we got some fan mail on oh, Friday right. that was specifically said to open here. Open at the table. Well, let's... Here, hold on. It, well, golly uh, gee. We're always here, open have, at the table. Have some, anything. Have some nerds, buddy. Yeah, just eat up. Eat up, bud. Let's right. see what we got here. I have the letter right here. You got the letter. Yeah. Who's, who's it go, from? Go ahead and read that yes, out. Let's go ahead and read that. All righty. To everyone at Team Four Star, I know screen time is precious, so I will keep this short. I appreciate I just wanted, it. I precious, just wanted to precious thank, screen time. Yep, just wanted to thank everyone at TFS for all the joy and laughter they have brought uh, myself and countless others over the years. We have all had rough spots in life, and many times the laughs I had from your various works were the only things that helped me make it through the day. I would like to have I I would like to have handcraft something for you guys, but I can't. So I decided to get you guys something to hopefully help immerse yourself in the era of the game. <laughs> As such, there are four mugs which I hope help everyone at the table feel like they are drinking like a pirate. Uh, let's see. There's oh, also shit. something else here. Uh, Feels like yeah, it's made sorry. out of wood. Yeah, you can go ahead and open those. I'll, uh, oh, read shit, the they are made letter. out of wood. Oh, man. Nice. Oh, man. Oh, wow. Look at these. Oh, dude, oh, grogs? That is dope. Oh, dude. Grog kegs. Excellent. My friend and I have started playing D&D at the beginning of the year, and I became a DM out of ne out of necessity. Oh, you're forever GM now. You've cursed yourself, <laughs> you, my dude. You and did it to yourself. It's fucking over. You are forever GM this now. That's why you don't volunteer. Yeah. As, you can, <laughs> as you can imagine, I've used TFS at the table as an example of how to run a game and as inspiration for a homebrew campaign I'm running. Zito, as thanks to you... Uh, for sharing this incredible world you've created and being an example of a great DM. Oh, well, thank you. There is a special what? There is a special set of die in which that are plated and inked in 24 karat gold. Oh wow! Holy oh, shit. is that a separate box? Is that a separate box in there? Oh shit! No. Fuck. Um. Present. I hope. Oh yeah. man, look at that. Let's uh, switch that when you get back there. Let's switch that camera over so we can show it up. Whoa, off. holy yeah. crap. Yeah, let's open those up. And I, I, hold on, let me just finish up the letter sure, here. Sure. I hope they bring you joy even if you never choose to roll them. I'll at least roll them once tonight, <laughs> I swear to God. Thank you for everything you've done and will do in the future. William Hawkins. P.S. I pray we get to the scene below with Edward Castor playing the role of Vegeta. Here. He keeps kicking me in the dick. <laughs> Why? Why does he keep kicking me in the... Oh. <laughs> so let me go ahead and open this box up. Because yeah, holy yeah, show shit. This off. The problem with gold is it's so notoriously easy to scoff. Like yeah. scratch yeah. and dent. That's why I'm like, I'll, I'll do this a couple... Well, Legendary like top... Legendary Tamarind Gold Dragon. Ooh. I mean, they made it sound like it was an inlay, so maybe it's all right, but I mean, oh no, that is gold. No, it's gold. That no, is let's gold. Take a look. Like, holy crap. There's gold on them there, dice. Oh my god. It's gold. Holy shit, dude. That's really nice. Yeah, hold on. Let's get the camera to zoom in. Yeah. See what we can do here. Oh, it's already oh, zoomed in. Oh, it's zoomed in all the way. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Dude. Unless we want to do MTV. Nah, we're, 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 yeah. no. Yeah. <laughs> Holy fuck. But yeah, Thank holy you. shit. Yeah, so let me get my shit put together so I can actually roll these properly. Let me at least bless this entire stream with one roll from this dice set. Alright, what 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 is our luck for the evening here, Zito? Rolling it's <laughs> roll that D20. Yep. Sixteen. That's above pretty average. Good. That's pretty good. Yeah, All right. That's bad. well above average. That's top quarter. Thank you so much. I'd pour something into this, but I like to wash cups before I yeah. drink from them the first time. But thank you so much. These are awesome. I have no respect for myself or my health. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'd use it, but it wouldn't fit in our cup holder. Here. Here you go, it. Yeah. Drink up, buddy. But it is very nice. 
Well, actually, let Freedom me Freedom is kibbles. <laughs> Yo, he'd be kibbles in it. <laughs> yep, kibbles in it. All right, so now that that's taken care of, thank you very much yes, again. Thank you. Wow, like holy shit! I am, I am very well. I'm, I am super excited to crack this open and drink from it. Yeah, you? hell yeah. All right, so last we left our heroes, unless anyone else has anything else to add. I ain't got jack shit, Captain. All right, that's me. Oh right, yeah. I ain't got jack shit, God. <laughs> now you're getting it. <laughs> Where last we left our heroes, they finally entered themselves into the uh, Paper Wasp, which is a inn at Furfos. Uh, they were waiting for their man Hippolyte to show up so they could actually get some permits to use rubies. And he was very rudely late. <laughs> but, <laughs> to, to his credit, the old lady, uh, Air Genasi, uh, believed had said that this is rather strange and she's getting a little worried, but it's probably nothing until a pseudo dragon was brought in with a guy clutching it, crying over it, saying that his pet that he's had since he was three years old had its throat slit out by some kind of creature. Tragedy. Having very huge, con uh, having a large amount of concern, considering that this has become a more common scenario in the town as of late, Belief has asked you guys if it would be all right if you could find Hippolyte and bring him here, at least to ease her mind. And that's where we have left off at this point. All right, <clears throat> Dagon agreed because we're getting a free room out of it. Exactly. Indeed. Um, Ezra would not turn down those, those, uh... Those in need. Yes. That are offering free rooms. Exactly. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> those in need who are able to pay him for his services. I help those who can help themselves. Uh, not entirely false. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> no, I help those who can help me. <laughs> help me help you by paying me to do it. Yeah. Yeah, this is, uh, this is, you know, greasing all the palms here. So that's where we left off so far. What will you guys do from here? Question, has what we've done con constituted a short rest? Yes. Okay, You've cool. got, you guys have pretty much, like, had drinks, sat down, taken a breather, so... I'm going to say that if you need HP back at all, you could have two dice rolls of a short rest. Uh, HP unnecessary. I just wanted a couple of spell slots back, a.k.a. Yeah. my spell slots. Yeah, that is the nice thing about warlocks. My, my spell slots are for the day. Yours are short rest. Yeah. Well, that's another thing I should actually say about uh, warlocks that I've found out, that uh, they get a fuck ton of spells, but the way to counter that is that they are limited yeah, to how they, many they Yeah, can they cast. can only use yeah. two, and you can only cast them at max level. Yep. Which means the spells you pick, they should probably have a level bonus to them. Yeah. yeah. Um, but all right, I'm. So the the guy ran in saying that his his pet has been murdered. Um, yeah, the guard kind of brought in the shambling, crying man who's kind of just like making hysterics all over the place. He's just trying to calm him down. I'm just gonna keep drinking from the uh, mug of ale that somebody purchased for me. Just put my arm around him. Where did you find your pet? I was going home near the, the, the west end of the village, and I found him dead. He's usually just sitting at the window waiting for me to go home, but he was at the base of the window, dead. Mm. On the outside. I don't know how something got in. So he was waiting for you inside your house, but you found his corpse outside? Outside. Oh, and the window wasn't broken? Was, no. Did it look like anybody broke in? No, it didn't look like anything. I mean, I, I, I... Let me roll for him to see if he actually remembers that. All right. With these gold dice now. Mm. <laughs> not <laughs> one. Is that? No, no, not uh. a one. Not a one. But this man can't remember shit. He is too delirious about this. Let me see if the guard will assess the situation <laughs> better. That's much better. <laughs> the guard looks to you. We didn't. F we didn't find any sizable break-in or entry point, but there were scratch marks, mostly by the creature. Uh, on the window itself. It came from the outside, though. Sir, I know this is a very emotional time for you, but would you mind if we examined your property? <laughs> I know, I know. Here, somebody get this man a drink. A couple of drinks. Uh, exactly five drinks. Everyone looks at you and just looks at it. looks at you just like, motherfucker. <laughs> Eloy yeah, thinks somebody. About it. Eloy thinks about it for a second and then orders ten drinks. More's, more's better, right? More is better. I'll take one of those. <laughs> so 50 bucks for two... Uh, 50 golds? 50 yeah. golds, all right. 
The guy just starts drinking. I'm going to roll a con save for him to see how he takes his alcohol. Now let's get this dude plastered. And all well, I he want fails is, the first one. All I want is permission to enter his property. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Like uh, like our former crewmate on St. Patrick's Day. Let's make this an Irish wig. Hey. <laughs> hey. All right. Scarfing down at least two, this man already looks like he's about to keel over. Yeah. Let me go for the third one before before before, before he slams down the third one. Now, sir... If you wish to avenge your pet, I assure you my compatriots and I can make it possible. All I need is permission to examine your home to make sure that whatever got to it might not still be there and, well, your home is safe. And after all, if we can find who did this to your pet, we would definitely be able to stop him from doing it to other people or pets. Exactly. Persuasion? Fuck, not a great roll. Uh, <laughs> 11. My persuasion is a modified 20. All right, let me double check for this man. Yeah, no, he's just like, I'm not going to give you my keys, but you can look around the house. I mean, no one went inside. He was out. No problem, no problem. Swishes was outside of the place. Poor, poor Swishes. Poor, Sw- poor Swishes. Sweet, sweet Swishes. Sweet, sweet now, Swishes. Drink some sweet liquor for sweet Swishes. Now, sir. Press F for Swishes. <laughs> S for swishes. Sir, I, un- I understand your uh, your apprehension and your unwillingness to give us your keys. However, if we if we manage to find a, a break-in entry point that this assailant used, can we investigate that? The guard's just looking at you. You know the other guards are going to be there, right? Absolutely. I'm not... I'm. Like hey, I we're said. just looking for permission from the, gen- from the gentleman. Yeah. I- <laughs> I just I want to make that's sh- a yes. I want to make sure that if we find a way in that the villain used and we follow them, that we don't get tagged as villains for breaking into his house. We by can this, all, by we this can all point, agree he's agreeing with us. <laughs> he is agreeing with you, and by this time there might be two like a couple of guards posted at the scene of the crime okay. at this point. So yes, he has given you permission to look. I have no plans to do anything untoward. Decision. <laughs> No plans. Vague ambitions, yeah. maybe. <laughs> All right, well, the guard kind of, like, asks you to at least give you his hand as he pulls out the ceremonial dagger. Oh, my. <laughs> I have to use the restroom. Oh. Uh, if, if one of you speaks for one of you, then this can only need to be, one of you just needs to be branded. One of these again, huh? Hey, do me a favor. Do like this. Uh. Uh. Okay, he's trustworthy. This is fine. (laughs) 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 All right, fine. (laughs) Ezra puts out his hand. He begins to mutter something in Angelic. You hear him. He's just, he's calling out the terms of the brand, and the brand is is that once the investigation is complete, the brand will decease. Okay. Uh, will uh, will not cease to be, sorry. Uh, and he begins to etch the, uh, etch on the top of uh, the, fir- like, the very thin layer of your skin, huh. puts oh, the brand on the back of your hand for, let me just go ahead real quick, since you're accepting it, oh, for one point of damage. Hooray! For one point of damage, you have been branded with uh, the call symbol. Uh, all right, I will make sure that nothing happens. And I will hold the my hold up my end of the bargain. They're all about the fancy little tattoos here. Yeah, they really are. You know all about this. This is a oh, common uh, thing. Yeah, that's why they're all about it. <laughs> yep. So at this, so with that, everyone is ready. Uh, actually. You see uh, Frida talking with someone up in the back. There's actually two of those red scale kobolds back there that have entered during all this commotion. Uh, I head over to to her, basically starting the conversation casually, like, "Hey, we're we're going to go help this guy. We're going to investigate his his home, and we're going to see if uh, we can find anything about the this this murderer who's on the loose near here. Uh, if you would like to come help, obviously you are." You're part of the crew and welcome to come along. However, if, uh, if you're pursuing your own leads. No, just gathering information, Captain. She looks over to the two kobolds and like waves them off like, thank you for your time, gentlemen. She gets up and she dons her turban and is ready to go outside. So what do our fellas have to say over here? 
They were giving me a little bit more information about what they have found. This kidnapper that they're searching, he has not returned into the Torch Plain Plateau as of yet, which is gives high hopes for whoever they're trying to find and for their captor, but it will be a matter of time before he ends up finding his way into from the desert into the plateau, and then that boy is lost completely. Okay, so they it's a race feel, against time. It's a race against time, and they feel that they... Uh, may have found the captor somewhere in the Ballybar uh, Temple. All right, Ballybar Temple is where things are looking. We'll we'll check that after we investigate this house. That's a bit further away, isn't it? Uh, roll me a knowledge check with advantage. Need that advantage. That advantage was better. Thirteen. So how this works is you're in Furfos, and Furfos has three different routes. The route leading to the west uh, leads to the Temple of Balibar, which is in the Torch Plain Desert. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we walked by that, right? No, you were walking towards it. Ah, gotcha. So here's Furfos. To the west is to the west of Furfos is going to be the Balibar Temple. To the north is going to be the Torch Plain Desert, and to the uh, to the east is a route leading towards another city, which entirely you have no reason to go that way. That that's like a that's like going around the plateau to get to another city. Gotcha. So she was just she was just looking into seeing what the uh, benefit would be if they actually if she wanted to pursue that quest. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we've I've made a deal that we're gonna go investigate this house and make sure we can find something about it. So that's that's where we're gonna head first, and hopefully we can find some clues. Maybe see if there's any more. She looks to you, and she, she's sour. She's sour that you said that. You had a blessing of an etch upon your skin like a tattoo from the god of pain himself, and you didn't choose to invite me in this little ritual of yours. I mean, he'd probably do you too. Hey, can we get one more of these over here? <laughs> yes! I apologize, Frida. I, for, I forgot that this might this might be something of interest to you. She yes, like, absolutely. She, like, get, she, like, she kind of like floats like... More, not Morgana. What's her face? No, uh, Morticia. She like okay. Morticia floats over to the dude, <laughs> and presents the back of her hand. Ash. Yeah, she's 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 with us, and she she volunteered to also be part of this. She's about this life. <laughs> she really wants to get involved in your culture. She really wants to get involved in your culture. Can can you do those magic tattoos, uh, Dagon? Is that something you've been trained to do? No. Oh, all right. You just seemed like an etch lord to me. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I was gonna say that opens lore, but ah! <laughs> I probably have the knowledge to do it, but I choose not to. I was gonna say he probably knows about I, it. I I know to, I know how to speak the language. No, you know about this. Like you yeah. can't, you can't add the same kind of like magical incantation that the guards do. Yeah. But etching, etching that symbol onto people's hands and saying that you're part of a deal, that's actually a way to make sure that you don't get squandered out of a deal. So yeah. that's common, but you're not gonna have magic attached to it. So you could add the tattoo, but later you have to heal it. Also, don't I need one of them like, uh, say like knives or sacramonial whatever. daggers? You or will something? need one of the daggers. Yeah. Yes. So it's no, like I'll just use the real knife. <laughs> there you go. My finger's <gasps> gone. <gasps> yes, I know. It's part of the deal, Shan. <laughs> so when he does it, it's like a marriage vow. Highly symbolic, but ultimately meaningless. <laughs> under, the cor uh, under the courts of man. <laughs> <laughs> so, Frida, you watch as Frida is getting the thing etched into her hand. She's, she's just looking at it. Hmm. She's nonplussed about it and it goes back to you. See, that's well, why I didn't really think inviting you would matter. You didn't seem like you oh was no. going to do a great job. It, it's real and it's binding. I can feel its magic flowing through my hand, but it is good to know that I felt no pain from it. It means that my enlightened state is still as strong as ever. Oh. If you want, I can tattoo you a bit more later. No. No? All right. Thought I'd offer. <laughs> No, she she will state though that again this feeling of not being able to feel physical pain from like something that's like very deep or damning, mm -hmm. like that's that's her like her her zealous like state of mind that 
She is now not feeling pain because of her faith in her god is so strong that she's obtained this state of being. She has worship, now, worshipped a god of pain with such understanding however, that it no longer hurts. Her, her, uh, let me just add on to yeah, this. Yeah, sure, go ahead. Uh, however, she did state that in, the, when, in your interview, I, and she'll state this for everyone else, that if she does feel pain, however, in any way when she feels that she's in this state, her faith is dwindled. It, it has dwindled. But that also means that now that she feels pain, there's room for improvement. So it's kind of a little bit of a wake-up call, but also a means to show that you can push yourself further. Okay. It's a, it invites yeah, was, growth. Yes. I was going to ask, uh, Dagon, knowing a bit about this ceremony and this contract, does he know what happens when the contract is broken? Because that's something we haven't come across yet. Like if somebody goes against the terms of the deal. Roll an olive check. Uh, that is a 16. 16? Uh, it will act as a marker, so it kind of, like, as long as the person is still nearby when the, when your contract has been broken, you still keep the band on your hand, and if you near the person, or if someone gets near you that applied the band onto you, it's like a location marker where they instantly can gotcha. just go, like, hey, that mother. Yeah, he's over here. However, the guards have a much larger range since they're part of the sun guard. And gotcha. Yeah, like so anyone who has a higher status they will find in you. the military, they will find you no matter how far you get. Okay. So running away if I break a deal, not an option. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> option, but you're probably going to fight something eventually. <laughs> bad option, yeah. but best to consider that you have this tattoo on your hand now forever and also... You're wanted by the call hey, that's uh, military. Weird, Ezra started wearing gloves forever. <laughs> but, uh, okay, yeah, well, we'll, go, we'll go investigate yeah, this we'll, house. We'll, we'll start heading towards that the house. All right, well, the guard gives you the directions in which way to go. So you and uh, Frida, you guys and Frida, uh, take off into the night. Uh, about 15 minutes go by. There's a couple of people who are, like, just packing up their stuff, getting ready to close up for the night. There's a few people, like, also discussing or just sitting out on the patios of their housing. Uh, there, you finally get to a building where there are three guards posted, one looking over the side of this man's house, and the two standing up in front just kind of, like, keeping an eye on the scene. They stop and look to you. They, again, they're, these are, like, the eight feet to nine feet tall Azamar uh, guard. They stand there as you near. They close their spears, crossing them together. Halt, sir. State uh, your business here. I hold up my hand. Uh, we've been we've been issued a, a a bit of a warrant to investigate this area. We're not allowed to enter the premises lest we find an entry point from an assailant. Uh, but we're here to investigate so that we might be able to find the 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 evil doers that are about. Mm. He looks over. He looks at your hand and he sees that like oh it's not a very powerful sigil so it's probably legit. He, like, ebbs his finger over it and starts reading it. You can... You, uh, Dagon, if you actually saw the back of his hand, it actually says in Angelic as... The, the text where uh, the etching is, mm -hmm. it says in Angelic, and it starts to, like, scroll up and repeat itself. So it, like, states the contract on the back of his hand. Okay. And he reads it over. After a few seconds have passed, he puts your hand down. They let you pass. Proceed. All right, fine. Enter in and I guess perception. Yep. All right. Yep. Well, what, what what do we see upon approaching this home? Approaching this home, uh, this man's uh, front yard is adorned by a lot of cactuses. Uh, some of them are very big, and a lot of them are ringed around in this uh, ringed like little tiny ones are ringed around the bigger ones. Uh, the rest of his uh, the rest of his uh, domicile is covered in sandstone that uh, kind of, like, goes into one side, like, almost to a, like, small side entrance. That's not the front door. The front door you can see in front of you. It doesn't look like it was broken in. There's no barred or broken entry. The doorknob is on there just fine. You go to, if you go to turn it, it's locked. Uh, the, it, the rest of his house is kind of, like, this weird, almost, like, white marble that like it doesn't look like it's supposed to be marble but it's like this weird uh slate of marble and then on the top of the house the roofing is made of brass okay is the body of the pet still here no however okay. you do see the guard on the other side where a window is to the second floor he is standing under there kind of like observing uh a, a small blood splatter that's actually 
pooled around where the base of the window is. Okay. I head over to that chap. And uh, so I just I just got to the got to the scene here. What's what what have we found so far? Well, as far as I can see, sir, uh, it looks like a case of some kind of creature just breaking and entering and finding their way inside. We're not really putting too much into this, but we have run the possibility that something actually entered in through the roof of this man's house, something small enough to take the creature outside with it. Last you remember, the body of the creature was probably as big as it right there, the little, uh, the little doll right there. Two feet, a foot. Half. Like half a foot or so. That puts it all into context, poor baby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dagon's looking for a, like, uh, I was going to say when he was going over there, Dagon was actually going to look for a way to get a little bit more vertical on this place to get kind of like a higher view. Yeah. Okay. Uh, to see the roof, uh, where you are is before there's like a stone fence that kind of like blocks in this man's property. He does have a shed and he does have two crates that are all filled with cactuses what, because some of the uh, thing is, uh, some of the, uh, I apologize, the boxes are slightly ajar so you can see inside them. This man has a bunch of like open pots and then inside the pots and the other bigger one is a bunch of cactuses. Knowledge nature, are these the type of like, you know, hallucinogenic peyote cactuses or are they just regular cactuses? <laughs> 15. It's green and it's pointy. And there's sometimes water inside of it. Mm. So maybe. I'm not <laughs> hearing a no. <laughs> uh, the, these are just basic household cactuses. Based on right. what you saw in this guy's house, this guy had some kind of floral or like pot making job. Potter. So it gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, so is there a way up to the roof? If you stand on top of the bigger crate, you can see the uh, this side of where the roof is sloped. All right. Uh, is the guard still nearby? Oops, the guard's yes. still nearby, right? Uh, I looked at him. Does this place have a chimney? Is there any way that they could have maybe gotten in access through the roof? No. Uh, even if there was a chimney, we checked it. The chute's uh, ventilation shaft was actually closed. Mm. And when they close it, they're actually slitted with a piece of brass rather than having it grated. Huh. So what makes you think it got in through the roof? Like, was there a... You, uh, that would be an investigation check as he points up to the roof and he tries to show you, so invent investigation with an advantage. Well, Dagon's climbing up there. Yeah. 15. 15? 18 for me. 15, 18. You guys see that there are small little holes at the top of the roof, but, like, not where the window is. So there is, like, like there's probably another room over. There's, like, small little holes that look like just because of the just because of time, holes began to form underneath the brass. Huh. Now, this might be just my ignorance. I come from a place where we don't really build buildings, but isn't the entire point of a roof to be like a solid barrier so that rain don't get in? These holes seem counterproductive. You live in a desert, friend. <laughs> Not much rain. So you get up on the roof. Uh, what did you roll? What do you want me to roll? Oh, okay, good call. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm Touché. Sorry. I was looking at them, and, the, and I was just like, wait a minute, so they rolled, and did you roll? Uh, so you get up on the uh, bigger crate. You look up at the roof. Uh, I need you to... What are you looking for, exactly? On top of the roof, I'm looking for any sort of physical evidence of any sort of wildlife or specifically mammalian-type creatures that might have been up here. Okay. I need you to roll me an investigation. Nat 20, holy nice. shit. Nat 20, very well. Uh, you don't know what the make of these marks are, but you do see a couple of, like, scratch marks on the uh, roof. Some of them kind of, like, make you feel like, oh, a couple of birds with really sharp talons must have got up here. But then you see a couple of scratch marks that lead not into the hole that these guys are looking at, but it's, like, near that part of the roof that it looks like something landed here that had the same claw marking that's on the glass of the window. Hmm. Interesting. Um, do these scratch marks sort of lead to any holes or anything? Or the is... Like, the scratch marks don't lead into the hole. The scratch marks look like something landed 
and made those scratch marks, and then something must have crawled its way into the hole without leaving any more marks like that. Gotcha. So it probably indicates that some kind of impact was had when the initial landing happened. Are there any, like, uh, with that nat 20, would I find, like, any tufts of hair scratched on the edge of the holes or anything like that? You see little dollops of blood, but they've dried in the sun heat. Sun's heat, I apologize. All right. Hmm. Uh, is it just, like, one of, like, just one of the holes just kind of, like, leading in, I'm guessing? How big is the hole? The hole is much smaller than the creature that was assumedly carried out. So like whatever. it's it's half the it's half the size of the pseudo dragon that you saw back at the end. So, we so if it did pull it out, it crushed the body along with it. it. Would have crushed the body along with it, and it would have had to have been at least that shape itself. So we're dealing with something that can either compact its own body, or it's very slender, or it is a shapeshifter. Is there? Can you tell from the markings? Could there, been a, could there have been more than one of them? It's hard to imagine something that small overpowering something that's, like, twice as big. Can I tell anything from that? Like, um, I, I, I've, I've, I got the scratch marks, and I figured out what hole they went in. But. You got the scratch marks, but it doesn't look like there was more than one. This looks like one creature did this. Mm, looks like it was only one. Hmm. When I look into the hole... Is there anything, like, on the inside that indicates you'd there was some to, sort like, of, like, a... You'd have to get up against the wall to see that. From where you're standing right now, that's far too difficult to look into. All right, well, I'll just drape myself over the side of the building and just look in through the hole, then. Okay. Uh, Perception, I'm guessing? Well, first, athletics to move the crate. Yeah, you, you're, you're, you are not on, you're on oh, the roof. Oh, I thought yeah, I thought you were, you're not oh, on, I'm on sorry. the roof. I, th yeah. I thought I jumped onto the roof. My no, bad. no, no, no. no you're, you're, you're looking at this all from the crate. Ah, that was the implication I going towards that I got there. My bad. Athletics to move the crate is a 21. 21? Yeah, you push the crate with no problem. You you hear a bunch of the things inside start to, like, wobble and hit against the uh, the crate itself. These Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yep. No problem. Good. All right. I climb up and in. <laughs> Did I hear that? No. Okay. <laughs> I was just confused. <laughs> No, that was not real. No one spoke. <laughs> Just being a shit. No, Dagon's willing to believe he's crazy. Yeah. Maybe it was Chick. That's what I'm going to chalk it up to. <laughs> yeah. He's throwing uh, his voice. So you push the crate over to the side. You get on top of it. You look inside the hole. From what you peer in, it almost looks like it's a washroom. Uh, and from what's inside, it does look like a couple of like items on the... Uh, a couple of items that you see inside. There are a couple of more pots, some more cactuses inside. There's a little bottle, a uh, barrel of not a barrel, like a small little bucket of water in there that looks like it's been tipped over, and it has a couple of uh, it has a couple of like a uh, bottles of like soaps and whatnot inside of it that also have been uh, tipped over. You're based on just like looking at this. You're thinking that whatever dragged the pseudo dragon in here, the pseudo dragon struggled and made somewhat of a mess. Makes sense. Like there a is a, a little... There. The door is cracked open a little bit, but not enough for you to peer through the other side of the door. Excuse me, uh, gods. There seems to uh, have been a bit of a scuffle on the inside there. Is it? Is it possible to get into this domicile? It would bring the fellow... Uh, it would take the fellow to, give it, uh, to have given his key for us to warrant to go inside. Hmm, but if there was an opening for us to get into that was not locked, then... What do you propose, sir? Well, nothing. I'm just saying there might be a way in somewhere around here. Persuasion. Fifteen? Make it quick before any other guards appear. All right. I'm going to... Uh, were there any windows around the back of the house? Yes, there is. There's one that... But it looks like it's boarded up with a box. Boarded up with From the box? inside. From the inside, okay. There is a back door, however. All right, I will check the back door. Is it also locked? Yes. What about when I lockpick it? <laughs> <laughs> Dagon, a con a, an idea. We're not allowed to enter, but if a wandering spirit just happened to go into that building and unlock the back door... <laughs> sure would be interesting. <laughs> I mean, uh, you, you say, know, I'm, you just, say, I'm just saying this as a hypothetical. You say that out loud, and he's just like, and sir, this is a crime that does not house the supernatural. 
absolutely is not. Uh, like, you're just talking up there. Uh, my lockpick check is a... Uh, sorry. This be sleight of hand, yeah? Uh, yes. Yeah, that's a 19. 19? <laughs> I'm over here trying to cause a distraction by arguing with the guard. Of <laughs> oh, no, the guard ag- agrees with you. He's, he's, <laughs> he's into this. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's he's just like he's trying to like tell you like oh if you have if you know like if you have some supernatural means this was not a supernatural occurrence no it was not <laughs> like the guard's super cool what you're trying to get to the bottom of this uh, however you pick on the lock you do open the you do get the lock uh, to pick the door however again you go to push and the door is blocked behind a crate or you feel something blocking the door because the door opens from the uh, from the inside. Interesting. Well, I... So there's something against this door. Yes. Does it feel like if I shoved it enough, it would move? With some strain, yes, but it will... Like, pushing against this door, when you start jiggling it, it makes, like, a creaking noise, and then it hits something. So, you can push it, but it will be loud. I suppose there... I'd be more worried about making a mess and disturbing the crime scene. But thankfully, it's on the second floor. This is on the first floor. Mm. Mm, Or at least that's what you believe the crime scene occurred in. Let's see. Uh, Where's my spell? Ah, yes. My spell list was back here. One sec. I need to remember what some of these spells do exactly. Mm -hmm. Like your And your only Otis right now is that the guard's trying to, like, make this seem, like... You're just talking with him and yeah. not making sure the other two guards aren't, like, going to stop you. Exactly. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what. If if we want to just give this a good shove, I can I can drop a, a silence on it so it doesn't make no noise. I mean, that wouldn't make noise, but I think you make a good point with disturbing the crime scene and making a mess and possibly getting things in the way. We, we don't know what we're going to find in there. All we're right. Gonna... I have a way to get in. And I don't even have to go. Fancy that. Chick, little help. I haven't really practiced this one yet. Yes, but... Dagon just kind of closes his eyes. All right, take me away, Chick. And I cast a blink, and boink, I disappear. Uh, roll a d20 at the end of uh, at the end of the turn's duration. If eleven or higher, I become invisible and intangible in the ethereal plane. I can see up to 60 feet in black and white, and when the spell ends, I return to an unoccupied space within 10 feet of where I vanished. Okay. So I can travel in the ethereal plane, but I'm basically just intangible. Okay. But I have to return back to where I came from. As long as I roll high enough, higher than an 11, and a 17 is, in fact, higher than an 11. Excellent. Turns out. So now you're just walking through? Basically, I just go through the wall, and I'm in the bathroom, but I can't interact with anything. I okay. can just see. Well, things. you're not in the bathroom. You or walk the through the washroom. Yeah. No, you walk through the wall. You walk through the wall. You actually walk through another crate. You look inside. This entire room looks like a small little greenhouse that's been boarded up with a bunch of shipping crates filled with cactuses and, pl- and uh, pots. How does this man live? 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 <laughs> <laughs> there is another door that leads inside. It does go. You can see a hallway that leads to the front door, but there is a staircase that leads up, and it looks like it's dripping with water as it's going down the stairs. Or at least you assume it's water, because all you're seeing is black and white. Yeah. Uh, but it is translucent. Yes. Okay, so I will hurry through this, because I'm not sure how long this spell lasts. Uh, I, I do have to make a roll at the end of every turn, or else I pop okay. back. Yep, so right now you enter through the storeroom. This is what you see. Uh, give me another roll to continue forward. Oof, close 12. Mm. All right. You can actually feel your body tethering this this like af- this like affliction upon you to go back inside. But Chick kind of just like, nah, 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 not yet, not yet, not yet. Don't yeah, no, my, phys- my physical body is literally gone right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But y- when you turn around and you look at it for the sake of seeing this spell, you actually see a version of yourself standing there. But that's the only thing that's colored. Gotcha. Oh, boy. Let's keep moving. So where do you go from here? Uh, I'm going to continue up the stairs to try to find the source of this liquid. You head upstairs. You're actually, you see the room uh, where, you see like the door that's slightly ajar and it leads into the washroom uh, from what you could see peering inside of it. The other room next to it is closed. However, uh, 
The other room next to it is closed. However, if you decide to keep going into that other room, you can then go in. You could go into that room, or you could stop here and go into the bathroom. So you said it's coming from the bathroom like area, or yeah, like like you're you're seeing the water coming from the bathroom area. So what that bucket of water that's that fell over that's pouring out and going down the stairs. All right. Well, that's where we believe the scuffle happened. So I'll check there. Okay. Uh. Well, I actually was going to say one more thing. Oh, sorry. Before, yeah. Before that happened. Uh, there is another source of water that leads from the other room going into the bathroom. That's not part of the water that's pouring out. Then that seems more important. I'll check that. Okay. So your turn will end going through this door. All right. You, uh, you look inside. Uh, the door in this one is closed. Uh, unlike the other one where the bathroom was slightly left open. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, you look inside, and there looks like a massive scuttle has happened, because now you're in this guy's bedroom. Gotcha. There's his bedroom, a couple of cactuses on hanging uh, uh, hanging pots over the side of his uh, bed. Uh, there's some paperwork and him with document- uh, documents about, like, shipping addresses, where things got to go, and a picture w- of what looks like uh, him trying to create the perfect cactus. Like, it, it shows documents of, like, cross-pollination attempts and also some, uh, like, another, like, shopping list that looks like stuff he needs to buy. Like, he's been he's been neglecting his groceries for quite some time because the date shows that he's been trying to work at this for the past uh, week and a half. All right. Pass that one later. Uh, is there any sort of evidence in here that might indicate what we're dealing with? Roll me an investigation check. Because, again, it's hard to see with this black and white uh, ethereal plane color. Yeah, uh, that is a 15. 15. Oh, wait, investigation. I actually have proficiency in that, my bad. Uh, that is a 7, or 18. 18, very well. Yes, uh, you're now looking towards the window where the pseudo-dragon was claimed to be sitting at, waiting for his master to come home. There looks like there's claw marks on the windowsill of the creature trying to get itself back on there. And then off to the side, there's a dresser that looks like a bunch of things have been knocked down. Looking on the floor, there's broken glass, a small pot with a cactus that's been tipped over, and some of the drawers are actually open. However, it actually also looks like that there are multiple drawers open on one side, whereas there's like two sides of the drawers. One's closed, one looks like it has claw marks on it that are at the base of the dresser. However, there are drawers that look like they were left open. Like, a top one, a middle one, and then the bottom one was looks like it was kind of scratched at. Okay. Um, so we know for a fact that the fight took place here. But I'm still not... I, I, I still don't think it's getting me any closer to what this thing is. Shit. Uh, I'm going to need you to roll again to remain eth- yeah. uh, ethereal. Yeah. And I pop back into your vision. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Do you think he's coming back? Or oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Hey. Hi. Take out a cigarette. That was fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> did you did you find anything? Uh, yeah. This uh, the attack took place in his bedroom. Uh, the creature was ambushed. Looks like there was a bit of a scuffle. Some things were knocked around. A lot of claw marks. Uh, whatever this is, it's. Rather hungry, obviously. Hmm. And strong enough to... It it has a means of flying. And it has some means of overpowering a creature that is at least wider than it. Was it that jerk buzzard? That's what I was thinking for a second, but there's no way it would be able to fit into that hole. Don't put this horse on me, the buzzard sitting there. (laughs) (sighs) Hmm, criminal always returns to the scene of the crime! (laughs) (laughs) Uh, wait, we're at the scene of the crime. What if we did it? I'm going to... You, there, there is one, there are two things you actually didn't mention in, in giving back to them that I explained in there that could help you in this scenario. I'm just going to right, let that I'm out going there. To, I'm going to roll an intelligence check to see if I can recall it. Okay. Will a 15 get me some of that? Yes. Or most of that? There was another liquid that led from outside the room going uh, into the master's bedroom, but the blood stain stopped as soon as it went out, as soon as it went inside. 
not the blood stain, the uh, the liquid. I apologize. All right, so well, it might yeah. leave a. There it, you go. It's blood. <laughs> it's fucking blood. You you can. It might you can be. Tell. It might be leaving a blood trail behind it from where it's traveling, or perhaps that's where it dragged the beast. Yeah, but the blood the blood trail stopped on the outside of the door, almost like that didn't happen at all. So it like went up to there and then just stopped. And it it went in it went inside the room, grabbed the creature. And then the blood started as soon as it came outside again. Okay. All right. Uh, so this trail of blood led back outside through the opening in the washroom where it dragged it out. So the idea is it didn't start bleeding until it exited that door, essentially. Yes. Okay. Did or at least that's what the evidence is pointing at. Was there anything else to, to say that they were still struggling at that point? Like, could one of them have gotten a lick in on the other and started it bleeding, like, at that point? There was a lot of knocked over furniture, but if I were to make an assumption here, I would say that it took care of the pseudo-dragon within that room, and then when it decided to start, like, you know, stop there for a snack, drank some of its blood, but wanting to take its meal to go, decided to start dragging it with it, and, you know, with an open wound, it just started bleeding. That's my theory. Well, that uh, you see the guard just sit there. Well, that leaves out the chupacabra theory. Yeah, we've got something that can that can fly, or at least it has claws. So it has jumps. legs. You know what we what we did. You weren't there for this one, Dagon. You know what we did see that could shape shift, could fly, had claws, and liked blood. I I, I think we got vampy boys. I mean, it's very possible. It's. They, they seem to be uh, finding themselves popping up more and more places. It seems like such a small target for a vampire. Though. Yeah, that's 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 my confusion. Do we know if do we know if the owner of this pet had any sort of enemies? Did he have like? Did it seem like he had any sort of business or anything that might have some competition that the uh, vampires would care about? Vampires would be silly, sir. At this point, just being in this area, like not even just torch. Being within the desert itself is a recipe for disaster, especially if they have don't sunlight have any sunlight. Would be to pretty rough out here in the and desert. And also, if any of the guards neared by this creature, we would be able to disintegrate it and point it out easily. I mean, nobody ever said vampires was smart. They made an enemy out of us. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> well, we know our killer is able to fly, can overpower at least something the size of a, a pseudo dragon, and compress it enough to pull it out of a very small hole. Well, it apparently from what happened is that it pulled it out of the hole, but in haste, left the body and just flew away. Mm -hmm. So something must have startled it. Meaning that it's not incredibly formidable in combat, is my guess. We did have to... We, we did... Uh, this man does have a couple of other pets. He actually has a dog close to the back, but we actually kept it in its kettle for the for the rest of the investigation. Wait. Could could the dog track it? Could it could it track it with the blood? I mean, smells? Probably. I'm trying to see if there's any way. Do I have a way to communicate with dogs? Well, no. I almost took the animal communication cantrip. <laughs> <laughs> Alas, evocation. I, have, I mean, alas, I have nothing. But um, do do we know where the dog was when this happened, or do we at least have an idea? When we entered in uh, from this side in the gate, the dog was out patrolling. We used a mage hand spell to put it back inside of its kettle. Hmm. Well, if it was patrolling, that means it wasn't chasing anything. So you can. You can go around back if you wish to have anything to do with that dog. To be honest, we wanted to keep it contained as much as we can while we do the investigation. I'll is, go have things to do with that dog. Is this uh, his only other pet? Uh, from what was outside, that was his only pet. Oh, and you didn't see no other pets inside? Not while I was there. Hmm. Well, A lot of the doors were closed, too. True. Well, yeah, let's check out this dog. Go around back again, find this dog's kennel. You see a rather large dog house. Almost looks like it houses something about the size of a Doberman. 
it is boarded up with what looks like a small mesh of cage and uh, and metal. Uh, you you don't hear growling when you near the cage. Hey, buddy. Anybody home? Eloy looks around to see if he can see anything uh, anything that looks like a leash about. Uh, you do see a leash. However, the leash doesn't look like when you take pick up the leash and you stretch it out to see like how big this thing is. It's not so much big as it stretches out long. And when you make it a perfect circle, the proper shape of this thing that goes around the creature's neck is almost like it's an oblong or egg shape. Huh. Uh, you, so you said there's like a like a mesh gate. Yes. Uh, would there be enough space to like push something small through, or is it like really? You can. Yes. Okay. Uh, I take a little bit of the, uh, my rations and just kind of make like a here, here, doggy, and just kind of like push it through the hole, like like a little. A bit tongue lashes out and takes it and pulls it back into the darkness. Oh, mm, horrifying! All right, that's no dog I've ever seen, but neat. Eloy like shakes the uh, shakes the the collar portion of the leash in front of the door. You want to go for walkies? W- walkies? I tap the mesh of the cage and cast the light cantrip on it. There is a giant bullfrog sitting inside of it. In what world is that a dog? Uh, but did he say frog and we misheard him? I, unless his accent is incredibly thick. No, you heard him. It said dog. He said The man said dog. Well, he's never met a dog. Look this thing over. Does it have claws? <laughs> no, it's just a giant, like what looks like a giant bullfrog, just sitting in there and licks his eyes. Uh, hey guards, uh, this there's a big frog back here. Is that what you put in this cage? Did the frog eat the dog? Oh no, no. I apologize. See, I I tend to this creature sometimes because my friend here, li- my friend who lives here, this is his dog. This is his. Dog, well, he calls it Dog. It's a frog named Dog? Yes. That's kind of amazing. Thank you. All right, well, uh, try to be more clarifying next time. I, apo- I, was, I was worried we found the culprit. <laughs> no, I apologize, sir. I'm very used to taking care of this creature. Well, okay. Uh, I don't know if frogs can, can scent a trail like dogs can. Yeah, I'm sort that, of thinking not. Yeah, thinking that this, idea uh, might The be man a- that lives here, is he an ASMR? Yes. Okay, I speak to the frog in Celestial. Who's a good boy? Me. Oh, <laughs> he's a good boy. You hear a croak, but it speaks back in ce- Celestial to you. Do you know what happened to your little brother, Dragon? Oh, him? Fuck that guy. I'm glad he's dead. Okay, good. You know. Anyway, um, did, did you, you see what did it? Unspoke frog. I did not. But that would have come in real handy. You're actually in that last. I mean, you were there, King. It was fine. <laughs> These two don't see it, but I need you to roll a quick uh, uh, intelligence check. Not my greatest. Uh, nine. Nine. You're seeing what looks like because of the shade of this creature inside, because of how big he is. There actually looks like a golden ring, almost like how one of the angel sentries are that are like kind of like etched in the back of his head. Did you happen to see anything before your uh, little little dragon bastard died? Yeah, you know, I, I kind of wanted to let that man just get away with it, but, you know, my, my master's really, really not okay with people breaking his pots. Yeah, really bad. It, it was this really tall... It, it was this really tall, like, almost sickly-looking man. Like, he... Like, the sun had no effect on him. He kind of, like... He turned into some kind of weird flying mouse and pulled the dragon out of the hole. And then when I saw him, I tried to give chase and he flew away as he was try- as he was uh, having, I think he was eating him. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, I wonder what it tasted like, right? Oh, I know, right? I've, I've always, I, I mean, I have attempted to try and eat him once before, but Master made me spit him out. <gasps> Maybe we can get you a piece. Would you? That'd be just so good. Oh, that'd be so great. Maybe, maybe. You, you guys are just watching as this giant bullfrog. <laughs> and Dagon's just going. <laughs> and then meanwhile, chick in the background. <sighs> yeah, I passed Fucking, him. My, I passed him my cigarette. Yeah, yeah, he just looks over. Like chick looks over to you guys and speaks in infernal. You can't hear. Him, he just goes. Rolls his one big eye. What a, fuck, what, a, what a fucking weird night, huh? <laughs> 
for the sake of it, his speech is actually deep speech. <laughs> just like really gets into the center of things, man. Yeah, deep speech. <laughs> so he tells you that we're looking for a tall man that yeah, can a, turn a tall, into a, a bat. A tall, mangly, like pale-skinned man that can turn into a flying mouse creature. Well, thank you very much. I'll see what I'll see what we can do about getting you a piece of that dragon. Uh, yep, it's a vampire. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's we was looking for those anyway, so that's a lead. That's good. Yeah. Uh, uh, not what? sure why this one's going around eating house pets, but did he happen to tell you which direction it went? Sad new foot. Frog's just like direction. Like if if you if it with a negative three in intelligence and yeah. a four. No, he doesn't know. All right. He doesn't know what he knows that uh, he, he said, ran out. He, he says away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He. I made him. I made him go away, but I don't know where. Excellent. All right. Yeah, he went away. Away from here. Well. That's less of a lead. I, I assumed that'd be the direction he would take, but I'm glad it was confirmed. I, I think if he'd chosen toward, we would know it by now. Yeah. Uh, if you look over to the side, there's... Uh, so from where you're standing, there's an alleyway that leads off into the back and into other people's houses from that, from that direction. To the left and to the right of the house is just another house, and then there's the front street. And... Y- like that that's the direction you have at this point. How close together are these houses on this street? Uh by they probably got like 5 feet of spacing between each other per fence. So it's okay. like you have 20 you have 10 to 15 feet of space for the side like little like garden area, wall, 5 feet of space house. Okay. Do you think if we could try and just pick up some sort of trail if this creature is is landing there might be claw marks on surrounding on surrounding building, buildings, and maybe we can have an idea of which direction it either came from or went to. Well, if we can figure out the pattern of attacks, we might be able to figure out what sort of cave system it might be hiding in. Excuse me, God. Um, I hear there have been multiple attacks like this, uh, mostly on wildlife and pets. Indeed. Do you know where else in this town there have been attacks? Nowhere near here, but there is one closer to the western gate that we've had a situation where folks have said that their goats and their cows have actually been attacked or been bitten by some kind of creature. Are these the first attacks? Yes. For the Yeah, I apologize. Yes. The, these were like months ago, so we kind of paid them no mind. All right. So the creature's gotten bolder as security has gotten... Thicker. And probably it's gotten hungrier. I mean, maybe it's just going after pets and livestock and such, because if you're a vampire in Angel Town, maybe that's just the safest thing to go after. I mean, you can't go around eating angels. You'll just fucking die. Yeah. Well, if it's been around the Western Gate, that does... Uh... Yep, the uh, the Western Gate is where it's been... Uh, is pretty much what the bullfrog told you, that there are only two other ways it could have possibly hard. gone. It's either in the back, through the front, or to the next house. Well, if the other, if the other attacks are, but the other attacks are in a separate part of the city, right? He said yes. they, they were far away. Well, from where you are, you're like another ten to fifteen minute walk away from the western gate. Okay. All right. Well, it might make sense for us to look that way just to see if we can find anything else. If that's where True. other attacks were. If we're assuming that this has everything to do with our uh, missing elephant friend. We should probably also stop by his place, just to make sure that he's all right. No, that's true. Because, you know, that is what we were originally contracted for. Yeah, it, absolutely. And I, I feel like we've at least made some progress on this case, so looks at the tattoo. So I can at least feel like I did something p- uh, towards this agreement. It won't go the away mo- until they're if, satisfied. If you actually start to walk towards the uh, entryway of the house, if you leave through the back through the or through the uh, front of the house, it begins to fade away. All right. Looks so like leaving the leaving the premises will take away the barter. Okay. Yeah, we we let the guard know what we got from the frog. The frog. Yes, frog dog. Dog the frog. The creature. Oh, that's, the frog oh, named that's dog. There. Oh, that's right. I'm. I apologize, sir. I have actually completely forgotten that he's able to speak some words. I realize my uh my friend who lives here actually. 
he he has somewhat of mythical knowledge that he was actually able to place a little medallion on the back of his frog to speak uh, to speak uh, angelic or yes. celestial. Yes, he's uh, quite eloquent, actually. But yes, so he normally never dealing- speaks to me. He only speaks to he only ever speaks to uh, the master. Oh, he likes yeah. you. Yeah, I've always had a way with animals. Right, chick. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But yes, we will uh, proceed forwards. Keep your eyes out for a very tall, lanky man who hates sunlight and turns into a, quote, flying mouse. That's bizarre, but we'll keep that in mind, citizen. <laughs> All right, we, we, we head. You in- say that. Ooh. Or at least I prepare to. Ooh. You say that to the guard, and he actually, like, taps his chin as you guys are about to leave. Wait, hold a second. Holding. I don't know if this is too general of a descriptor, but I have heard there are some rather pale folk that have come in from the west coming from the gates of Ballybar. They came seeking riches, or at least that's what they claim to. I haven't seen them in quite some time, but... If you, if this leads you to any other sort of investigation, maybe heading towards the Western Gate might be your next choice. Do you know where they might have taken up residence? Sadly, no. Most likely they have, they're changing through inns. Makes sense to me. And the only inn that was... The only inn that most people normally converge on when they can't get inside the, uh, the Neris estate is going to the Paper Wasp. Well. There are other houses around the gates that kind of act as small inns, but they're not really anything official, more like they're just room and boards that people give to make an extra buck. Sounds like a lot of ground to cover for just us. I wonder if the Deimos boys might know of any rumors of anybody of that description going around the inns. Mm, well, depends we fu- on if we can find any out here. Yeah, I was going to say, if we, if we find someone who we can who we can identify as an information broker, that might be something we can definitely work with, but... We also, you bring up a good point. We we were asked to to uh, find uh, Hippolyte. Hippolyte, thank you. I know I wrote it down somewhere. We were asked to to find Hippolyte. That is, that is another one of our uh, obligations that we have, and it's, and it'll get us a room. Yeah, it, it's it's sounding like that might this might coincide with this well, investigation. Piece, so. piece your clues together. Remember that uh, belief has also told you that Hippolyte comes to the paper wasp, which is in the center of town, and he comes from the estate. And the activity where this is happening is more towards the western gate, and the guard has told you that he does remember seeing someone who does fit the physical description closer towards the gate. To the west. So are you saying that Hippolyte... Oh, no, I'm not saying anything Well, no, I'm asking the the estate. What direction is that? The estate from the paper wasp. In relation to the... Yeah. Yeah. This, the estate from the paper wasp is to the north. You could see it. Okay, all right. So the estate's to the north, gates to the west, paper wasp is in the center. Yes. yes. So if he was coming from the north, if something is attacking from the west, that might not coincide with whatever happened to him. Therefore, if they are staying at the paper wasp, which we're assuming they are, because not a lot of other places for shelter, and they've clearly come under the guise of travelers. We'll, well go investigate the west, but my gut tells me the paper wasp is the place that we want to be by dawn. Well, we can definitely look around and... But also th- think of it this way. The guard are also now patrolling the paper wasp as they took someone in there. And also, like, the, they did mention, or we were told, that there were there are people who do house people temporarily, so someone might have stayed with somebody. Like a small room and board area, yeah. just so like, hey, you came in from the desert, maybe you don't have the funds to stay at the paper wasp, maybe you just yeah. need to for like, For a cheaper for room, a you hours. can just stay at our bed and breakfast. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll go check out the western gate, yes. the western area. Alrighty. Uh, so, what will you guys do? We, there is a back road, and then there's the main street. Uh, well, the back road seems like the dangerous back, way. Back road seems like where uh, where dirty dealings might be going, so I'm definitely going to, to say we start there. Uh, I, it'd be pretty brazen to be just hanging out on Main. So you lead out into the back roads from behind the people's houses? Yes. Uh, I'm going to be looking near... Uh, 
I'm going to be looking for mm, the way this thing with the way this guy is acting. If he's going after pets and stuff, he's probably just slipping into open windows or cracks and stuff. So I'm just going to be looking for entry points and seeing if there's any sort of scuffle or. Well, you enter the back. Everyone, roll a perception check. Twenty-three. 16, 17. Eloy, you see little dollops of what looks like dried blood on some garbage pails. Ooh, ooh, a clue. I, I found a clue. <laughs> Jin- <laughs> Jinkies. <laughs> this is pretty zoned. Frida just looks at you. Let's split up, gang. <laughs> No, that's the mistake they always make. <laughs> well, they all converge at the midway point of the episode anyway. Sometimes they go through a hallway and go in and out of lots of doors. <laughs> it's so with, a, with a bunch of 70s music in the background talking about seven days a week. Uh, I head over to the blood that Eloy has pointed out. I'm going to investigate and see if there's any sort of like stuff around it as far as like a trail or... First of all, let's see if it's fresh blood. I did say it was dried. Yeah, okay. it was dried, but I just want to see if there's like a, if it looks like it went in a direction. Uh, 19. 19? I mean, if nothing else, we can extrapolate from the direction that it's leading from yeah. the scene of the crime. But I'm going to look for any pies cooling in windowsills. <laughs> <I like it. laughs> you actually notice that yeah. the uh, blood splatter, while it is small, it does look like the, uh, the first hit of blood that hit the garbage pail is leading towards the, uh, southwest of, the northwest of the house, from the backyard anyway. So it... It flew from the back. It flew whatever it came from. It flew from the back of the house, hit the garbage pail, and continued going in that direction. Huh. So, so it was, it was bleeding after it dropped off the body. So, good on you, little dragon boy. You got your <laughs> licks in before you went. <laughs> well, I don't know. This, do we know if this is even the same incident? These these things have been causing problems throughout town. It sounds like. But, but piecing this together from what you're looking at, it does look like whatever flew away, it dropped blood going in that direction. Mm-hmm. So going into the back routes, heading more towards the western gate is what looks like the direction it went. Yeah. So All right, we'll continue keep, on that Keep way, going down that direction. Yeah. All right. Uh, you guys continue to follow the road uh, in the back, uh, the back of the houses. There are a couple of people who are actually like watching as you guys go by, and they're kind of like weirded out. Like, what are these strange people doing in my backyard? <laughs> Are there any pies cooling in windowsills? <laughs> I'll roll a perception for it. I'll... Go for it. Yeah. Fifteen. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, there is. <laughs> there's a pie on a fucking windowsill. <laughs> is there anybody watching? <laughs> yes, because the lights are on. You can see candlelight in the house. Someone's, someone's watching it cool on the window. <laughs> no, still. someone's not watching it cool, but it leads to a kitchen. Uh, I keep... You hear the sounds of life coming from inside that window. <laughs> I just love my new fresh pie. I can't wait to adore it. <laughs> <laughs> Made with yank berries. Oh, jeez, that's an expensive pie. Oh, man. Uh, Dagon's hungry. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on. Wait, hold on, I got this. Eloy goes around to the front door of the house and knocks on the door. Yes! <laughs> Ezra's over here, like, actually looking around still. <laughs> got a... In case there's anything I might find that is useful while these two are doing this, I got a 19 on investigation. Or not investigation. Meanwhile, you and Frieda are just sitting there just like, really? I got, I got a 19 in perception. Me- so. me- meanwhile, Eloy is now conversing with a, with a housewife, Azamar. It's like, yes, dear. I would... Hello, where? Dagon hey. steals the fuck out of that pie. <laughs> Roll stealth. <laughs> Dagon. Uh, okay, he's going to steal it. I was going to say, I, I was waiting for it to be there hat in hand, at, asking for a piece. <laughs> I couldn't help but adore this pie from out here. Stealth check is a 17. <laughs> you steal the pie. Yeah. <laughs> well, now you, now you have a crisp burning pie in your hand. Yes, I fucking do. I'm so as a pretext, Eloy's going to ask her about if she's seen any signs of vampiric activity or if her all her pets are all right. Roll a persuasion check. Uh 24. Well, I'll be fucking flipped. Ooh. 
Who'd have thought just going around and asking people directly what the fuck the problem was, you'd have an answer. Well, well, well. And you get a pie out of it. <laughs> Meanwhile, Ezra's like looking for clues very intensely just right behind you. You didn't know. Have- yeah, no. you didn't notice it, but Frida was actually scooping up the blood in little vials since no one was kind of paying attention to her that whole time. Okay. <laughs> she's like, ad- she's like mesmerized by it and trying to like just, she's like, reveal your secrets, blood. Is there, can you tell like what kind of creature had like what blood this was? I'm gonna roll a medicine for her real for that, fast for that. With a nat twenty, there are traces of necrotics in this blood. It is uh, undead. The pieces are all falling into place. Necrotics, isn't that what we were trying to make out of hit sweat? No, no, no. That's something else. Okay. So <laughs> it didn't s- put you. To you sleep. speak to the woman, and she actually does say, "Oh, well, yes, we act well just this night." Uh, one of my, not my dogs, one of my uh, guard drakes was actually barking and, and hissing as we saw, like, weird little shadows kind of flying by. We thought it was just birds flying over very late at night. Huh. We were sitting out in our, we were sitting out in our back while I was waiting for my pies to cool. <laughs> I was tending, I was tending to the cactus fruit that I was growing, and then all of a sudden we saw these flying creatures kind of, like, go overhead, and my guard drake was barking. I just want Dagon just walking up, like, sucking his thumbs and fingers. <laughs> Did you see what direction they went? <laughs> no, you returned to Frida and, and Ezra with pie in hand. <laughs> I have pie. Oh, wow. <laughs> but, That's... but yes, that would be my follow-up question. Any idea which way they went? Oh, when we saw, they were flying, uh, they were flying out the back roads over towards the gate. Mm, all right. No, that jabs with everything we've seen. Thank you so much for your help. One final question. Uh, I I couldn't help but but smell the lovely aroma of pie in your window. I've I've heard tales of a legendary pie monger. Do you know of a man named Simon? Uh, oh no. He was known to live in the Eber Hall area. <laughs> it was a very long setup, but we got there. <laughs> you know what? That's so silly of me. The end of the story, he had to retire. Never mind. Thank you so much for your help, ma'am. She was going to offer you pie. <laughs> well, wouldn't that have been awkward? <laughs> oh, I'm no, no thank you. I swore off out of respect for the Spumoni family. The what? Never mind. It's a long story. Thank you so much. It's a great song, though. <laughs> Even Dagon knows it. <laughs> it's gotten it's, around. Yeah, it's made its, it's made its way across. I mean, you wouldn't be a fucking two badge wielding bard uh, without, <laughs> without that someone shit telling going around. around. <laughs> oh my fuck! All right, you return to the back roads. <laughs> and pie in hand. And, yeah. With that, the woman also shuts the door and starts walking back towards the kitchen. I've snuck down <laughs> like the other way. By the way, I would not have stayed well, in a direction where I would have had to walk past well, that window again. Okay. Okay. But here's the problem, though, is that these two are in the back. You came back with a the pie. They're investigating still. What are you and Frida gonna do at this point? Well, first, I'm probably gonna fucking have a slice of that pie. <laughs> if Dagon's just walking up with it. <laughs> Look, Ezra was against stealing it, but if it's here now, he's not gonna be mad. <laughs> He was a, he was upset putting him about putting yourself in danger. How but hey, it? you guess what? You proved it wasn't a problem. Okay, you know what? <laughs> Fuck it. I'm gonna play into this for a little bit. How do you carve said pie? I have a dagger. <laughs> yeah, with my plus one dagger, I get a hell of a slice of pie. It doesn't. That's a magical weapon. Doesn't matter if this pie is angelic. It gets cut. <laughs> little did you know it was a ghost pie and it actually did damage. <laughs> oh no, we, we hurt the pie. <laughs> so you, fucking Eloy comes back to the to even Frida is eating pie. <laughs> it's off for a slice. Uh, mm-hmm. Eloy, you hungry? Oh yeah, sure. Th- I, uh, you know what? No, no, out of respect. Thank no. You guys go ahead though. That's just a me thing. <laughs> <laughs> this flavor is divine. It's quite good. Eloy, you look over. You look over to the side, and there's a. <laughs> There's a desert guard drake draped <laughs> over the table, o- o- over the fence, looking at you all glaringly with a death glare. Is it? Is this the guard drake in in her yard? Yes. How much of the pie is left? <laughs> like, let's see. It's, it's cut, hissing cut, at you guys. We cut it's, three slices 
out of a pie. Normally, you cut a pie in two. Well, here, how about, no, how about this? I'm gonna roll this. There for, would be three-fourths of this pie left, for approximately. You, yeah, but for you three, I'm gonna roll this for Frida as well. Roll a sleight of hand to carve how big of a, of a pie Oh, how got. much pie we how got? How much pie you have taken. <laughs> Hell yeah. Sleight of hand for Dagon <sighs> is a uh, 22. Damn, I, I didn't do very good, 15. We'll restore that one HP as you take a bite out of the cactus fruit pie. Um, there is there is like maybe two moderate slices left of this pie. Okay, so we have the guard drake in the yard of the person who made this pie, correct? Yes. Staring at us. It is staring at you guys, hissing, uh, ready right. to make, ready uh, to leap into action the moment you do something. New sleight of hand. I am going to uh, re rearranging the remaining pie to make it look like an animal was eating it. <laughs> Twenty one. Just drop up some of it, make it look like a cobbler. Yep. <laughs> you know, he he looks real threatening, but all of a sudden, I just want to get into that yard. It's, you know what they say, my guard drake brings all the boys to the yard. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, Eloy. That's a bit of a stretch. I, I feel like we just found the title for the episode. <laughs> What, what were we doing? We were fighting we're, vampires? No, man, no. we're eating pie. <laughs> you thought this is the best episode ever. I was going to say, <laughs> this may have some delicious filling, but this pie is anything but filler. A man's probably getting eaten by vampires as we speak. But boy, I have but to we'll take be the fed. time to draw a circle on this thing just to see how much pie I'm eating. <laughs> With a good sleight of hand, this creature rolls a. Rolls at that one. Yeah. So it just sits there watching you growling as you slowly put the pie right next to him. <laughs> Sitting right there, just like a nice little chopped up cobbler piece. Okay. This might I, I take like one more finger. For, mm -hmm. this might get the guard trick to attack me, but 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 I can't I can't leave it with incomplete evidence. <laughs> Are you going to smear pie on it? With just a dollop of pie on my hands, I just start flicking it towards At the handle <laughs> animal with disadvantage. <laughs> Before I start this, I just look at my friends and go, we might have to run really soon. <laughs> I give you a thumbs up. Mm. <laughs> I, I ready an action. I'm going to ready a hypnotic pattern to lock this thing down if it goes no, to bite him. Suggest it to eat the rest of the pie. Uh, <laughs> I, have to say, I have to share a language for uh, to suggest. Okay. It. Yeah. Uh, my animal good. handling is 18, by the way. With a disadvantage? Oh, you're right. <laughs> Shit. That changes a lot. Oh, no. <laughs> Four. <laughs> Look, I, I wasn't I wasn't touching it. I want to be clear. Oh no, I, I did know. not touch it. Oh I no, you did not touch it. But the moment you spat fucking pie in its, its eye, face. it leaped out and grabbed your hand. Ah, ah, ah. All right, I cast. I cast. Bad, oh bad no, not no. eating drink. <laughs> you wait. You wait. What is your AC? My AC is fifteen. Now's a good time to use these gold plated dice. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks again. The pie heist. The Peist! <laughs> okay, so we need another title. With a nat 20! <laughs> this right. creature is a creature of extremes. Nah, hey, you know what? <laughs> I know what I was signing up for. All right. So, this thing bites into your head. You don't feel the pain at first, but then all of a sudden your entire arm gets seared. As you as you look you look down you see the veins in your arm actually look like they become molten as it traces up your arm. This creature does. Yeah, how how much does this guard drake hurt me? Fifty damage. You are dead. No 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 <laughs> no no. I promise I will not shoot the Drake unless I have to. <laughs> well, no, we're just gonna make a panic and it's gonna be like, I tried to stop him from eating your pie and he attacked me! 15 <laughs> points of fire damage. Jeez. And you are considered grappled at this point. Ah, help me! <laughs> <laughs> Hypnotic pattern on the Drake. <laughs> he gets a wisdom save. Oh, I want, I want you to roll me a wisdom save to not scream. That's fine. That was already my actual response, because, like I said, Ezra's plan is blame it on this thing. <laughs> you said an intelligence check? Just yep. want to be sure? Uh, no, no, wisdom. wisdom. Oh, wisdom? Wisdom uh, save. Wisdom save, okay. Dagon is going to cover Ezra's mouth. 
Okay. So well, yeah, you're muffled. probably going to need to because I got a seven. Okay. <laughs> Do I have to roll anything to cover his mouth? Yes. Sleight of hand. Sleight of hand is one of my okay ones. 19. <laughs> Frida, Frida, tell him to embrace it. <laughs> Frida just looks at you guys as she's holding the pie in her hand. Walks over to the walks over to the entire scene. Looks at the great uh, at the uh, Drake. Digs her fingers into the creature's skull. That's how it goes. That's a, shh, shh, it's okay. <laughs> She's like Dagon behind you. Shh, shh. <laughs> It'll be okay you, in a second. You hear the you hear the beast let out a growling hiss, but then start of look like it's starting to get woozy, and then falls over asleep. There we go. The pie made him sleepy. <laughs> Ow! Right. Yes. It, you want you want to go kill some vampires? Ah, oh, that sounds good. Okay, let's go kill some vampires. <laughs> Frida like looks over to you and just smiles. Ah. Explain the pain. Ah. Well, how much does it see here? Okay, um, so here's the thing. It, it did that really we're weird thing. We're while we're walking, I'm guessing. <laughs> yeah, we're just You, you should probably run at this point. <laughs> a light jog. <laughs> just a, br- a brisk walk. Yeah. yeah. Heading out there. Well, it's like, it, it, it stung and like burned really bad at first, but then it got like that feeling where it gets very cold. You know, when you get so hot, it's like your body starts understanding like what's happening to it and it just kind of reverses everything. It's just oh, this you poor dear. freezing, You're burning sick. pain. You poor dear, your senses were absolutely dull. Hold still. She grabs it with ah! all of her might. She digs still her- tender, Still no, tender, still no, tender! No, no, she digs her claws right into it, takes her knife, and plunges it. <laughs> and you feel a coldness seep into your body. As she pulls the dagger out, it closes up, and you are healed. Ah. Four. Shit, 11 points of damage. Mm-hmm. Whew. Well, I definitely, I definitely feel better, but ah, it's a really good pie. I'd say it's worth it. <clears throat> Less so Ginger for me. Claw, what did you do to the pie? Keep moving. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when we'll take a break. <laughs> we'll be right back after this. <laughs> Welcome back to the table. Woo! We got our pie. Yes, after putting the pie in pirate, we uh, start heading towards... There it is. Uh, ...this western gate that... To find really vampires. Ah, ooh, ooh, all right. I like it. All right. All of us feeling better and... <laughs> all of you guys... Full tummies. All of you guys, except for Eloy, get a plus one to wisdom for the rest of, the, for the rest of this day. Uh, plus right. one to the modifier or plus one... one mod. Okay. I'm, I'm just glad the uh, the vampires weren't the pie thieves, or else it might have been a real pie in the sky scenario. Mm. <laughs> Damn it! Here I thought I was hot shit with my pirate. <laughs> you two outdo me in seconds. We all gotta get a slice of that. These puns Cake. are crusty. Mm. <laughs> uh, okay, so we're heading in the direction that clearly the the <laughs> before our little escapade, uh, the the blood was clearly leading. Um, so we're just heading to the west. All right. Uh, you guys are heading, uh, you guys keep heading west. You're still in the back alleys. You're kind of like reaching now towards a fork in the road, but following that little bit of a uh, dollop of blood and where the, uh, the woman said that the bat was flying, you're heading over towards like the main gate. So you're now in the back roads of the house and you actually reach the western gate uh, that closes off from the other side, so- uh, from the desert. Uh, you, there's not a lot of activity here. There's not a lot of people who, uh, are outside here, because by this point, it's now like 11 o'clock at night, and everyone's trying to go to sleep. Uh, it is eerily quiet. You can only hear, like, the sounds of, of the wind blowing in the air. Uh, you look up into the sky. The, the moon is now out in complete in, like, fully out. Uh, you are, n- you now have a north or south direction you could possibly go after following this trail, because in front of you right now is the gate itself. Okay. Not the gate, but the wall. <clears throat> is the moon full? Yes. Okay. Pie in the sky. That hits my eye like a big piece of pie. Right. That's some more. Eh? <laughs> You're welcome. I'm, I'm glad you said, I'm glad you knocked that down <laughs> as I set it up for you. 
Well, uh, I am going to suggest north because I feel like the the blood was headed northwest when we when we looked at it. So, alrighty, I will, <clears throat> I will recommend that to the group if there. Odds any. are it would be flying in a straight line. Yeah, that's yep. what makes sense to me. As you guys say that, I need you all to roll a perception check. Roll for Frida as well. That one, so I don't see it. Eighteen. Seventeen. 18, 17? Mm-hmm. All right, I'm staring yeah, at so the floor. You're speaking to Frida, ex- uh, ex- explaining, like, we should probably go north, figure it out. You guys are starting to hear, like, actual hushed voices off in the distance before turning the corner. You're hearing that too, right? Those aren't just the head voices? No, no, I got that too. Okay, cool. Wait, the head voices or the hearing? Oh, no, it's not It's not in your head. It's No, like, no, no, I mean, like, Dagon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dagon isn't... He can't tell what the difference between... No, you guys are hearing hushed whispers just before... Ezra and Frida are about to turn the corner. Yeah, well, anyway, it just makes sense to me that it'd probably be flying this direction. Wait, listen, hear that. Over there. You You two, since you're not really hearing it, they kind of, you guys kind of get up against the wall, so does uh, Frida and Ezra, but you're kind of just like, you know, you're in the far back of this conversation, you're not really hearing it. If if these two are going like, do you hear that? I I would say Ezra would automatically start looking for stealth options. Mm. Yeah, that's yeah. what Dagon was going to do. He was going to oh, try sure, to like, sure. slink what, into what some shadows. Just Cause... stealth check, basically. Yeah. Uh, that was a nineteen. Frida kind of like backs up against the wall as well. I have a modified twenty for stealth. You guys are fine. I'm going to guess with my nat one, I am slightly less stealthy. Natural right. wonders. <laughs> Quiet, I am trying to listen to it. Th- yeah. hushed, the hushed voices stop. It sounds like their conversation was cut short the moment they heard you. Okay. Well, I'm going to try to peer around the corner from my hidden position to see them. Roll with a disadvantage now that they know of your position. Now that they know that something's going on in that position. Yeah, to something, they know something's here. Uh, is this perception? Yes. That is a 19. With disadvantage? Yeah. Uh, okay. My other one was a nat 20. Okay. Uh, <laughs> luckily enough, they don't see you, but you are seeing four, uh, four hooded figures kind of just like looking over in your general vicinity. There's like maybe four or five of them all huddled together in a circle and they turn and they're now looking in the direction. They turn back around and look towards each other and they start to walk off. I can catch them if you want me to, but I don't know what'll happen if I do. Let's try and just keep pursuing them, but just quietly. Eloy's gonna hold on. Let me just check something here. No, that seems like a bad idea. Never mind. If we just assault some people on the street, that might put us in more danger than we're than we're already in. So, just in case, let's just try and tail them. All right, I keep my eye on them as they walk. They're gone. Oh, where, <laughs> wh- when did they did he, disappear? Did he, did he look back to tell me? They didn't me disappear. That? Like you saw, like a little bit of them, just like are up the street already. Like with some weird grace, they are in like light years ahead of you guys. They're they just start. moving very oh, quickly. Well, I, I would have done my damn just to keep up with them while staying hidden. Okay, uh, I need you to. So you're just gonna go after them while being stealth? Yes. Uh, roll me a stealth check. Whatever that is. Give it another roll. Yeah. That is a modified twenty. Wow. Modified twenty. All right. Yeah. You're you're still stealthy. Like they don't they don't know about you. They know about that. There's a loud voice over in that direction. Uh, however, I do need you to roll me a perception check. As I'm following them. Yes. Okay. Less good. That is a eleven. All right, last thing, roll me a deck save. All right. Oh boy. Deck save is a 14. A 14. 
Okay. You start to walk silently, like crouch your crouch walk your way down the down the alleyway. Uh, you get past one of the uh, one of the barrels that they were standing at while you were talking while they were talking with each other before they started moving. Mm -hmm. Just as you turn the corner, you see something kind of like undulate a little bit off to the side. <laughs> that enough for you to stop, and you watch as something lashes out and almost kind of like whips around, almost like a scythe trying to reach at you, and it stops just in front of you, and then retracts back in as it gives like this weird No. <laughs> I imagine it's like I'm walking by, it's like, my eyes. Okay. You now know there's some kind of really weird trap. It almost, when you looked at the flesh, it almost looked like it was patched together. With that scythe, it was an addition on added onto that little latch. Friend of yours, chick? <laughs> what was that? that? No fucking clue. Stay down. Also, avoid avoid things. You can you can uh, with your stealth you could peer around the side and notice there is this weird like almost looks like a man's head melded into the side of the wall. That when it when you watch as the scythe kind of retracts back in, it goes into the mouth. This guy looks like he's been patched up by some kind of surgery. It's a head on a wall. A head on this wall yes. next to this barrel. Yep. This was a trap. <laughs> Clearly. Um surprised nobody else has Notice something like this. I guess it's something they just added. Anyway, I'm gonna keep trying. Like, obviously, my priority number one is keeping my eye on these people. They are gone. They 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 kept, oh, they kept going forward, but at this point, they're out of your sight. Fuck. Uh, the the trap. Yeah. Delayed you enough for them to get ahead. It would have caught my eye. They they you know where they're going. There's no other option for them to go anywhere else. It's just go up this street. But they lay traps. All right, we've got Wait, traps yeah. coming ahead. I'm gonna call this one Terry. <laughs> Uh, okay. I don't want to just get hit by it, so I'm going to... I ready my crossbow and just shoot at this head. Roll the hit. I'm going to roll that again. It was better last time, but oh well. Uh, 15. You hit it. All right. Roll damage. I haven't used my crossbow in a minute. <laughs> uh, four. Your arrow hits it right. In, uh, hits the guy right in the side of the temple. He kind of like gives up this like muddle, this muttered, garbled shriek, but not enough to like like go out to the rest of the to the rest of the alleyway. And then it shrivels and turns into dried blood. Like, and you watch as like a little metal ring falls to the floor and then cracks. Uh, am I able to see enough of the ring? Does that match the ring that I had gotten from the guy we had in the trash can yes. the other time? Okay. Yeah, these are, in case there was absolutely any doubt, definitely vampires. <laughs> I, I was assuming <laughs> as such. Just wanted to make sure all our bases were covered. We can, I think we can attack these guys with impunity. <laughs> all right, what do you do? Uh, you know which way they went. Yeah, they got I, I, I show like, yeah, they went that way. By, by now, they probably got a good 120 feet ahead of you. I'm just going to be very slowly looking around for traps. Uh, would that be perception or investigation? That'd be perception. Okay. Uh, 22, just to scope out ahead of us. And I do have dark vision. I know it's night, so I just want to put that out there. Same here. You notice they have left multiple heads in a trail heading heading up ahead of you. From what you can see at this point... You can see at least three heads, like one on one of the side of the buildings, another one off to the distance, and another one that's kind of peaked around a vase. Um, making the assumption uh, with the information I have and what I can see, is there? Does it look like there's any sort of path or like any any way I can go to just avoid their like where their eye line is? Like, would it just be being low, or any of them angled like down to be able to see if I was like say crawling? Hmm. There are a couple of objects around that you could probably like with a with a good enough check, you could probably 
go over the trap just to keep going forward. Okay. But you don't know if that still doesn't trigger the trap. Gotcha. Yeah. That's that's why I said with the information I have, yep. Ezra's preoccupied is, is his big concern so is eye line. I can I can with that you pretty much open up the idea that you can either find an alternate path with a acrobatics or athletics check, depending on how you wish to go about it, mm -hmm. or you could take out the traps, but note that will take time yeah. away from chasing after them. Yeah, that's why I was, my idea was taking the traps out one by one would take a lot of time. If we were trying to chase them, it is look for a path that they probably won't hit. Uh, at this point, Eloy would have caught up with you. I'm gonna cast resistance on Ezra. Uh, you have a plus 1d4 to your next saving throw. Cool. Uh, so, should you, <laughs> should <laughs> you set it. anything off, you have yeah. something of a bonus. All, All right. right, so the first trap you're looking at, uh, it's against the wall. And to the side, there appears to be a couple of broken crates. Uh, but and there appears to be a broken crate. But there also looks like there's a tree that you could probably kick yourself off of. So with a good athletics or acrobatics check, depending on how you wish to go about this, mm -hmm. you will be able to get, get over it. Okay. Um, Eloy is staying fixated on Ezra, trying to watch exactly what he does to see if he can... Yeah. Learn something from your route. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> I, like I said, well. the the trap is against the wall. You can see the head looking out in that distance. You don't know which way it's looking because its eyes like glaring over, or there has no eyes. Mm -hmm. uh, but on the opposite end, it looks like there's broken crates and a tree. All right. Enough that if you were to go over these crates, you probably could clear ten feet. Okay, then. So would I just be wanting to like just be jumping over this, particularly if I'm trying to do acrobatics and not athletics? Yes. Okay. Then I'm be, You would be using your speed. Uh, if you wanted to do that, you, you would use the crates as a as a jumping point and mm -hmm. then kicking off the tree. Okay. Then I'm going to run with that. Let's, let's try and kick off that tree and be over these heads and just test out to see if, if it's all about eye line. Fucking me. Uh, nine for my acrobatics check to try and clear that. Foot goes deep into the broken mess of the, cr of the crate and the head turns and looks at you. Roll a deck save. You got it. Let's see what I get. Hey, a nat one. <sighs> you know, just adding the four will probably get me out of that. Yeah, so. and, and actually you can, it's on the next saving throw of your choice, so you yeah. can bank that for later. Yeah, so I'm just gonna <laughs> hold on to that and uh, just eat this nat one and uh, let's see what happens. Short of instant death, I can't see me uh, getting much less bad. Let's do it. Hurt me, DM. Well. Okay, well. You are knocked prone as the scythe-like appendage hits you in the leg. You feel, <laughs> you feel this odd, sickening sensation seep through your leg. Roll me a con save. For only two points of damage, though. Okay. Right. Wow. Snake eyes. Hey, oh, a uh, con save, a 21. Tell me, was it you who was uh, afflicted with vampirism at one point? Or oh like, yeah. Or I it was that. that. It's that exact same okay. feeling. You you were you were oh, able God. to kick your leg just away from the swing enough that you felt it graze and hit your leg. Enough for the trap to realign itself, but now you are dead center in the middle of it. Moving will trigger this thing. Okay. I'm just... Okay. I kind of like walk by you. Uh, do you need help? That looks painful. Yeah, that this this does sting, just a bit, and also it uh, very familiar feeling. May have given me a little bit of a, a, a touch of their a touch of their vampirism. So. It's... That means I'll have to perform some blood transfusion. If you wouldn't mind, but just, I'm like just trying not to move at all, just lest I just trigger something else. Just, uh, we might need to save that. We might need to deal with these traps first. Can I reach the uh, trap that he's gotten by with uh, Chick right now from where I'm at? If I were just like, shh, stab it. You could stab it, but it probably would activate you getting near it. Like getting that close to it, it would activate the trap. So no, you are not within reach of it, just where you are. If you yeah, approach it, though, it'll trigger it. All right, try not to move. Chick, doing my best. The mouth. That one. And I fire an Eldritch Blast. Nice. 
I do the warlock thing. Uh, <laughs> what that, does the warlock say? The warlock says, Eldritch Blast! <laughs> <laughs> 24 to hit. I'm guessing that'll do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, that's a D10 plus... Uh, that's 11 damage. 11 damage? And you do get two bolts with that. You could... I do. Is, the is, is, there, is there a second one within sight? Yes. You, you, with what Ezra has told you guys, you can see the second one. All right. The I'll third one is probably a little too far away for that bolt. I'll fire at the second one with my second shot. Uh, that is a 19 to hit? That will hit. Okay. And that one takes 13 damage. <laughs> Good shot, Jacob. <sighs> well, okay, I guess that's... I gotta keep that in mind later. That probably would have just been faster. <laughs> Maybe. Nah, with this whole little <laughs> rigmarole, this is like a couple of minutes. Nah, yeah. Also, we are totally giving away that we're coming. <laughs> yep. There is also one more trap off in the distance. All right, there's one more over there. I'm not exactly sure where its aggro points are, though, so we might just well, need to... Well, from what it's positioned, it's up against the wall this time. Mm-hmm. Uh, you you saw... said it's like around a corner or something, right? Yeah, or... you saw yeah. you saw the appendage of like the mouth kind of just like oh, show the uh, show the scythe and they kind of like retract back in just enough for it to like see it was like oh it's readying itself. Mm -hmm. uh, the creature, uh, the the pod I'm gonna call it the pod for this. For sure. This point. The pod trap uh, is hidden behind a tree, and the wall next to it uh, looks like the only way you could possibly get over this thing without triggering it if you want to jump again is jumping off a very narrow ledge of a window but is there a pie in that one no <laughs> <laughs> all right this is looking like a pretty dicey uh pathway to try and just jump around this may be a another trap it just be behoove us to get rid of um i will try and shoot it let's see how much dagon has in common with wake Will I accidentally poke him? No. Uh, 21. 21? To hit. Okay, you hit this one. <laughs> That's the pod screaming. <laughs> Great. It's growing. It's actually expanding. Well, if damage matters at all, uh, it was a six. <laughs> okay. Oh, no, it's expand. You hit it, and now it's expanding and getting bigger. And it turns and looks to you. Chick, shoot that. <laughs> Eldritch Blast! Behold, uh, Eldritch Blast! Eldritch Blast! That is a 24 to hit. And with the second bolt, a 22 to hit. They both hit. All right. First one deals... Uh, da, 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 14 damage, second one deals 7 damage. It's growing with each hit. It now takes up the whole street. What have you done, chick? Roll initiative. <laughs> okay. Uh, that is uh, thir er, 14, sorry. 11. 11? So, let me, let me just go over that again real quick with you guys. Uh, so, Nick again, sorry. Uh, 14. 14. Uh, 21. 21. And you? And 11. 11. Grant, Ben, and Nick. And now to roll for Frida. What happened to my dice? Here it is. Oh, fuck. She was not prepared for that. She rolled a two. Mm. She was busy. She was busy fantasizing about the pain it was feeling. Yeah, it's just like, oh, awesome, <laughs> lovely. It takes pain. Yes. And now for the the creature. Congratulations, guys! I have found the first time ever in any D and D campaign to effectively use a living wall as an enemy. Nice. All right. And. The living wall gets to go just a little bit at before Frida. That's a quick wall. All right. Grant, you're Grant. up. You guys are currently 40 feet away from the living wall that has now taken up like 30 squares. 
of space and is okay. now looking at you. So it's just enormous staring at us. Giant wall of flesh. Yeah. All right. Well, no, it's it's the flesh kind of extended out from the head, so it like it's the whole head kind of just like turned. You know that thing from uh, Spirited Away? It's just those giant like those those three heads that can turn into one head. Mm-hmm. Think that, except now there's like a little bit of sinew that takes up the extra space that was open. Gross. All right. Uh, well, if that's the case, let's just line up an explosive bolt on this <laughs> one. This might get a little messy, kids, but here we go. Uh, Eighteen. Eighteen. Uh, that will hit. Hell yeah. Uh, ba, 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 and, oh yeah, that plus D6, that's right. All right. For the just straight bolt hit, uh, we have seven. Okay. Uh, and for the added fire damage, there's two. Okay. You see the wall cringe at the fact that you set it on fire. The bolt, however, you kind of like shoot it in the nose. <laughs> the nose begins to expand. All right, so the parts we hit are what grow. <laughs> but it didn't. It was it was nonplussed about the arrow, but the fire did something. Also, as as I was surmising, not a fan of fire. Makes sense. All right, what else do you do? I'm probably not going to... Hey, you know what? Uh, I'm going to look around real quick to see if there's anything to like hide behind or take cover from, recover with. Uh, my perception is a eight. Ten, uh, ten squares behind you, there's a small little alleyway that leads into another back alley. Okay, so there's just nothing else along the walls or anything to, to get behind? No. Okay. Um... Uh, you have that tree, the broken barrels, like, way further back. Mm-hmm. Uh, beyond that, it's just that open street. Okay. Well, that seems like a, a really long distance to try and go back. So, uh, if that's the case, then I'll just kind of be up against the the wall. Not not the wall of flesh, but the <laughs> just actual hey, alley wall. Going? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Although, I don't know. Maybe you could shoot stuff, and maybe close range is the best place to be. I don't know. All right. Uh, Nick, you're up. Well, this thing is now the target of my Hexblade's curse. All righty. And I am going to... Uh, how far away from it am I? You are 40 feet away from this thing. All right. I will travel 30 feet and cast Eldritch... Or, yeah, I will get within... You know, let's say I travel 15 feet. That way I can get to it next round. Okay. And then I'll cast Eldritch Blast. One more chick. I mean two. Ah, you know what I fucking mean. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 18 to hit. That will hit. All right. And will a, yes, an 18 hits. Okay. That is, uh, seven damage plus 15 damage. So. All right. Yeah. Pretty good. 22 damage. It is now expanding enough that you're actually seeing its flesh bloat against the walls as if it can't contain itself. There is a, there is a sickening, almost like what looks like some kind of pulsating mass that is giving off a sort of luminescence in open pores, that is growing with each hit. I'm picturing like video drome type shit, basically. Yep. <laughs> yep. You're not wrong. All right. Fourteen, fifteen. Do 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 do. Okay. All right, Eloy, unless you have something else you want to do. Nope, that was everything. Okay. I used my bonus action and my action. <laughs> All right, so how, how close to this thing am I? 40 feet. 40 feet? Okay, that's... You know what? I'm going to go ahead and back up 20 feet <laughs> and just keep my distance from this thing, and I'm going to cast Fairy Fire on it. All right. Uh, so it gets a dexterity save. <laughs> Which as, it has jack shit of. As a, as a I, wall, I I'm imagining it does not move very quick. But in that one, it certainly does. <laughs> all right. This thing lights up glowing. All attacks <laughs> with it are now with advantage. That's really good for me. I crit on a 19 or a 20. Yeah, that's really good for you, too. That means that you get yep. sneak attack bonus for the rest of this combat, yep. basically. Yep. So, um, yeah, not much to be done with my bonus action. Actually, just just because I seldom use it up. Uh, Dagon, 
Mess this fucker up. <laughs> Consider Bardic, it done. Bardic inspiration. I throw on my cool goggles. <laughs> <laughs> Wait your turn. <laughs> Can't that use a, an object. That was a free action. <laughs> Yeah, and that's <laughs> their shades dropped and this was free. <laughs> and that's my turn. All right. Living Wall's turn. Living Wall looks to the lot of you, opens its mouth wide and agape, and shows the scythe that has grown with it. And behind the scythe looks like a volatile tumor that almost reminds you two of the abyssal. Mm. Okay. Well, if that doesn't scream to me, boss weak point, I don't know what does. <laughs> is, it, is it flashing red by chance? <laughs> no, but it is this sickeningly glowing yellow. Almost it looks like urine. Mm, all right. Like molten urine in a, in a condensed bag of flesh. Oh, don't say that. I just ate pie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you watch as the tendril lashes out. Everyone except for Eloy and Frida, I need your ACs. Armor class, 17. 15 for me. This sounds like an attack I can see, so an uncanny dodge might come in handy, depending <laughs> on how this goes. Ezra, unfortunately, you do not make this roll. All right. Uh, this will do 3d6. I'm imagining this don like that... You know that clip in like the new Devil May Cry trailer where he's like sticks his chin yeah. up to the. So you that know is... what? I'm I'm gonna use my reaction, um, and hey, dummy, you can't hit nothing. That's a rogue over there. You know how slippery they are. Ah, that's a bad roll though. Would subtracting one from his to hit roll convert that into a miss by chance? Yes. Wow. wow. Yeah, <laughs> Bards. Joe Eloy. Yes, it would. Woo! You big dummy! What? Right over Ezra's head. Just got a, his hat. Got a haircut. <laughs> oh no! I have to replace that. Now, Scaf, now you have to Scaf, get a new abubu. Scaffy Scaf, like looks up. Oh! <laughs> yeah. I figured it had to be close if it hit you but missed him. <laughs> yeah, Scaffy just got a manicure. All right. Second attack for this boy. It's getting closer. It is now in front of you. Moving closer. Wait, it's in front of me? Yep. Yeah, okay. So it moved 15 feet? It moved gotcha. 15. It, you watch as the mass moved 15 feet. Oh, glad we stopped short, huh? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it like, looks, looks down at you, and like its chin is like up to your head. Hello. <laughs> as it opens its mouth one more time, and you watch as, like, Maggots begin to writhe out. I hold my breath. <laughs> <laughs> I need you to roll me a con save. Uh, you can add that D8 to your saving throw if you need to. We will find out. <laughs> I might not need to. That is a 21. Oh, that's super good. Yeah. Uh, you could actually feel like the sickening aura kind of come out of it. It was trying to debilitate you in some way, but you just like you took your goggles out and put up you know, put up your turban. But no. <laughs> mm. Yeah, there are now maggots wriggling, wriggling in your hair as like a tidal wave of vomit came out and splashed on you. But you don't feel affected by whatever like the smell was. You guys watch as Dagon is standing there looking at the wall and looking at its open mouth. Nothing's happening. Okay. Like you don't like you just watch as Dagon is peering into the wall's mouth and nothing more. Is everything okay over there? It's about to be. <laughs> With that save, you actually notice that, like, wait, that thing was just feeding on my fear for a second. Wait. I fear nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not afraid. I have fear on my back. <laughs> yeah, he just, like, you just watch his, like, chick kind of just, like, the sword, like, looks to you. And it takes the hilt. <laughs> Stop it. Now, fuck you. <laughs> Wake up, idiot. Fine. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Frida's turn. All right, I'm gonna roll for Frida to see if she kind of learns. She like kind of like gathers info from what's going on here. Mm -hmm. With an Arcana check of 18, yes, with an Arcana check of 18, she's watching this thing. She saw that it wasn't like really like all that phased about the fact that you guys are hitting it, almost like it's wanting to be hit. Mm -hmm. 
She then, like, notices that when you hit it with the fire, like, that little bit of singe kind of, like, made him kind of revolt. The fire affected him, but not so much the hit. The hit looks like he's trying to accept it. She, like, kind of mutters to herself, like, almost like, like, saying, like, Becker, in my time of need, tell me what I'm supposed to do in this hour. And she, like, gets this little bit of an epiphany. Master, what, what you ask of me is blasphemy, but I shall do this. She, she can't get up to the creature just yet, but you guys watch as she, like, gets close to you, and she pulls out, and she's, like, reviled at the fact that she had to pull this out at any point. It's a cure moderate wounds potion. Oh. She doesn't, she, she looks over at it. She can't get close to it enough, but she does, like, kind of, like, smile at it, like, if medicine is your pain, then let me ease that fidgeting for you. She casts Ray of Enfeeblement on it. Let me roll and see if this thing saves that attack. No, it does not. Mm. So, like before, this thing is enfeebled. And for one attack, or at least for four turns, unless it breaks it with a certain dodge, with a certain roll, uh... All attacks have disadvantage. Oh, okay. All of its attacks are disadvantage. Yep. Okay. And unless I'm, and if I'm getting that wrong, sorry. <laughs> this is he is describing it for Richard's, how we're playing. Uh, strength checks or whatever. I, I don't fucking remember Raven Feebleman. It's a weird yeah. spell. You know, I should write all this shit down, but you know what? Whatever. It's, it's like <laughs> strength based things or yeah, something. Yeah, I mean, I could look it up while this is going on, but now we're back up the list. So that was Frida's turn. That, that means, means your explosive bolt goes off. Yes, Grant, it's your turn. Yes. Oh, that's right. The explosive bolt went off now, so the, I guess the fire part wouldn't have actually hit until just now. I forgot that they... I, I mean, it like, might be looking at the fire. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. So, yeah. I guess the I guess the two I, fire damage I gave it before actually only now kicks in. Yep. Um, you actually watch as its flesh kind of just, like, wriggles and almost looks like it kind of, like, shrinks. But, so it's like its head kind of, like, ducks into the flesh but then comes back out. Okay, so... Frida said out loud, medicine is your pain, right? Like, Yep, she said that she out loud. She said that. I got to hear that. All right. She's just like, I believe if medicine is your pain, then let me ease that for you. All right. Then I have an idea. <laughs> uh, here it is. On hit, the target, it's a make a range spell, spell attack. On hit, the target deals only half damage on weapon attacks that use strength. Okay. okay. Oh, half half damage. damage. Okay. So cool. she pretty much just half the scythe attack. Okay. Um, I run up. <laughs> <laughs> Up to this thing's face. Um, Hello. <laughs> hey, how's it going? <laughs> From my bag. I've had these for a while. Let's see if this is when they finally become useful. With medical braces, I try to just pry its mouth open. Roll a medical check with, with advantage. With advantage? You are using medical braces, so this is technically I've, what they're used for. I won't question it. 15. kind of pry it into its mouth and open it enough that you could see the tongue. <laughs> yeah, like, like its mouth is open enough that you like you pry it open so now it's like viced open like <laughs> Okay. Now you said that there was this big blinking clearly weak spot in this fucking yep, thing. Yep, it, lo it looks like a it looks like a bag of piss in a wall of flesh. All right, even I have a feeling even with my not so great strength, uh, I can make that work. <laughs> with another explosive bolt. <laughs> Actually, no. You know what? This would be way easier. Uh, I have a crossbow. <laughs> Not just that. I am going to say this, though. Vicing this thing's mouth open is an action. That's fine. I, I, I can, is it a I can cunning talk. action? Yeah. Uh, well, he, that's, that's what, what I was going to say. Gonna ask. Okay. Whether or not it is, I still have another cunning action. I have a uh, <laughs> a potion of healing. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and I'm just going to dump that in its mouth. I was All right, what the healing. fuck are you doing? <laughs> roll healing. Uh, what is for healing potions again? Is it uh, 2d4? Oh, wait, uh, what is it? Was it 2d4? Uh, 2d4 plus 2 yep. is what I had written down. That was down. it, 2d4 plus 2. Okay. So let's just at least see, see how this theory works. I've got those braces in there, so. Well, minimum damage of 2, uh, two plus 2, so 4. Or healing, I guess, but... You kind of splash this thing's tongue, and you watch as it starts to, like, meld away. 
Okay, yeah, it doesn't like it if you heal it. <laughs> uh, all right. You actually was... watch as the wall is starting to shrink at that. Like, bits of the sinew that was on the side of the wall kind of detach, leaving open some space. Also, it starts falling apart <laughs> right there. So well, not all the way. Like, oh, yeah, but but... You, watch, you saw, like, the wall like kind of, like, jiggling. It's like, oh, I got to compensate for that as the flesh comes back, but now a piece of the... The ceiling where the where it's attached to the wall, it now has an open hole. I mean, if we're just gonna go this way, uh... boop, heal it for six. <laughs> <laughs> Is that just flat? Uh, yeah, healing hands action. Touch a creature heals it for my level. Boop. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> uh, just real quick. That uh, was twelve points of damage you did. Oh wow! Nice. Uh, just so, just so I know, um, my medical braces, are they still there? Is its mouth still wide open, or is it... On my turn, I'll figure okay. that out. Right. <laughs> okay, well, I guess just then, uh, for, uh, for, for sake, until he, until his turn goes, the thing's mouth is wide open. If you've got anything you want to shoot that weak spot with. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so it's on me. Well, no, 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 we're on the wall's turn. Oh, wait, no, you're right, you're right. Oh, Jesus Christ, I'm yeah. sorry. Okay. Go ahead. I, I thought so, wasn't sure. Um, okay, so a couple of questions. Those medical braces, are those metallic? <laughs> he, he gave them to me, so I, I, I don't <laughs> know. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Uh, hmm. Rather, I found them when I rummaged through, I think, that ship we fought the vampires on. Yeah. It was the Rumblood ship. Yeah. They had all that medical equipment. Yep. All right, in that case, I am going to... Uh, to back up 15 feet to match how much it's closing with me to stay the maximum distance away from it. Uh, and then I am going to cast Heat Metal on the braces that are that are jammed in its mouth. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so that's an immediate 2d8 fire damage. Uh, four. So that's four fire damage. I'm using my... Magic bagpipes, by the way, to use uh, okay. two concentration spells at once. Okay. All right. And you are shrinking this thing. It, it's now not occupying 15 feet. It's now only occupying 10. Nice. All right. I think, uh, I think that'll do for the moment. Okay. We are now at here. Okay. This thing is still like kicking and flailing about, but you're you're shrinking it. So you you and you're what like you could see from inside its mouth the the bag that of like this liquid that was jostling around inside of it. Mm -hmm. It's now shrinking and deflating. Okay. It is now its turn. <gasps> like tries to spit up the the metal brace. He has to like fuck with it somehow, maybe even chop his own mouth open. Yep. Hey Ezra, I need you to roll me a. I'm gonna roll roll me a medical to see like like to if, see... if your handiwork sticks. I mean, if he's shrinking, those braces would, would just, just get be getting tighter. tighter, and tighter. tighter. That, oh no! Trust me, I have that accounted for. Ah, uh, five on that one. I'm assuming no advantage or anything. He, he bites down and spits it out. Okay. <laughs> well, that did take away one of his actions, though. Hey, did something. And I'm and going to assume those braces are destroyed. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> if it's sitting in my inventory, he does. For he months. does take up another move. He had he had three moves. He had an attack. He had two attacks and a move. So he used up one of his attacks to spit that up. Kind of trudges his way back in front of you guys. It's tilting. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I need you guys to roll an. A we'll get all well, your AC anyway. Uh, seventeen. Fifteen. Oh, yeah, um... Did you get me? E e Eloy and Frida watch as the wall of flesh falls down in front of them on top of them. No, oh. no, 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 no! <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Ezra just stares up kind of calmly. Of course. I, 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 <laughs> I, pur I purposely try to get in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, mm. Would you say I could see this attack? Yes. <laughs> okay, just let me know what the damage is and I'll tell you what it actually is. <laughs> you know what, just... Mm, I doubt it would have come up, but I'm just gonna drop that heat metal spell just on the off chance that either of you come in contact with it in the... Oh. Actually, no. 
I'm gonna keep that heat metal spell because he's landing on. Them. Yeah, it's it's landing on the uh, the the red hot bracers. That's true. Twenty seven points of damage, and I need you guys to roll a con save for suffocation. Ooh. All right, well I'll go ahead and do that. Doesn't suffocation take place after uh, what? What? Yeah, after. Not 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 now. Okay. On your turn, it's suffocation. Or uh, for me, my con save is uh, seventeen. Uh, and the 27, I'm going to turn that into... No, 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 no. You don't need to hold the, the con we do at your turn. All right. Oh, at my turn. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, then I'll just hold on to that. But um, with my uncanny dodge, 27 half... You find an be... open... You find, like, a pour that's just enough that, like, this. you won't take the yeah. whole blunt of this. Uh, would be 14, I assume. And I, I'm assuming this doesn't count as a... Well, it wouldn't be a weapon attack, so it wouldn't get halved by Raven Feebleman. It's not a weapon attack yeah. yet. It's gravity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that makes the sense. The strongest weapon. Although, what's its stat that it's using on this one? Or is there a stat? Or is it just... Yeah, well, he did say strength-based weapon attacks. True enough. Strength-based only... weapon. So gotcha. that thing in its mouth is considered a weapon. Yeah. Which, don't worry, I this is part of its attack pattern that I wrote down. No, so. I get you. I don't know. I believe it. It makes sense. It's a wall. Yep. All right. Well, that was its turn. It's now laying on top of Dagon and Ezra. <laughs> You, mm. you now watch as a 10-foot wall of blubber is now on the floor in front of you on top of them. <laughs> how thick is this wall? How, how That's how thick it is, 10 feet. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought, I thought it was already 10 feet. So It's, it's 10 feet across. It, it, okay, so it's a 10-foot cube. Yeah. So climbing over this thing, you can do now, I guess. I, I mean, if I really wanted to. <laughs> Frida. Nah, yeah, step on it. That's Frida kind of just like looks at this thing. Oh, well, shit. Splash. <laughs> Splash the potion of healing on it. Yep. Let me do with a moderate spell. The moderate uh, healing. Not bad. That does uh, 18 points of damage to this thing. Nice. It is now shrunk back down to its five feet. Five feet thick rather than 10 feet thick. Oh, that shouldn't nice. be covering both of us entirely. Lestra thick. <laughs> it is now actually taking proper damage. Cool. You were you were feeding it temp by hitting it. I see. Gotcha. Uh, uh, and this will give you guys and you guys no longer have to take that suffocation damage if you roll a successful strength check. Okay. Because of that 10 feet. Because, yeah. Pushing them off of us now. Yep. Okay. So you, my you, turn. You feel the weight of this creature now lessen on you. Okay. Uh, did I need to keep the con roll for the suffocation before, or should I just do the strength one to see if I get it off? First? Uh, yes. You. It, it pushed the. It pushed the suffocation check off you. Okay. And I'm going to try and force this off of me with a bare strength check. Four. I'm a very, I'm a very, I've, I have the hands of a dancer. I'm not a tough man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now I need to roll a con save for suffocation. Okay. So we, we've went from just a cube of beet to now a cube of the carbonite in, on Han Solo. Okay. Just. <laughs> um. Do I have to announce if I'm using the, the the save you gave me before I tell the number? Unfortunately, that would have worn off by now. Oh, what, okay. Well, yeah. then, never mind. Uh, if that's the case, then 11. You do not pass, unfortunately. All right. You take two points of damage. Okay. It is now your turn. My turn? No, no, no. He's oh. it's still on his oh, turn. Oh, okay. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't gotten to do anything yet. I'm just suffocating in here. Yep. Although, can I do anything if I'm being covered by this guy? You are. Hmm. It's actually a very. I mean, good if point. you can get something out of your pocket, you can probably like try and yeah. stab it a bunch. If you have mm. anything that requires a bonus round, I'll allow it. Like, like getting out an item or something. What about my cunning action? <laughs> What's uh, your cunning action? I mean, cunning action lets me spend bonus actions to dash, disengage, hide, sleight of hand, thieves' tools, and use an object. <laughs> you, if you use your cunning action, I'd allow you to do another strength check to get out. Okay. Could I use an item though? If I'm just right here? Yes. Depending on what the item is. What that would that would be a sleight of hands check with disadvantage. What about a scroll of healing words? 
Roll me a sleight of hand with disadvantage. Okay. See if he can, like, wiggle, wiggle his hand yeah. in to get it out. Just like, is that it? Oh, no, that's not it. Ooh. <laughs> uh, 14. With a nat 1, you pull it out instantly. <laughs> and now I use the scroll of healing word. Which again, how do I calculate that? Uh, uh, D4 plus Eloy's charisma. Yeah, yep. which would be uh, plus 4. Okay. Six. All right. And now I only have two. Okay. For you those you, you feel, feel this thing jiggle as it's like, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Gonna land the ball, you're gonna get the horns. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nick, uh, strength check. Sure thing. Um, can I use this strength check for something other than getting out? Sure. What do you want to do? I want to grab his arm. You are nearby him. I will allow this. Okay. Uh, athletics. That's a nineteen. You 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 mush your hand through the flesh and find something that's a little bit more solid. Wait, is that metal? Oh wait, no, that's his knife. Oh, there's his leg. I got him. All right, cool. And now, to your so, dismay, you're now yeah. I just feel something just grabbing me. Something and I'm like, grabbing me. Uh, like, uh, uh, no! <laughs> don't worry about it. I can't. I can't comfort <laughs> I was gonna you say, yet. You can't but, tell me that. Yeah. Do <laughs> um, <laughs> you still want me to roll the suffocation? Uh, before we yeah, like, roll a con save. Okay. That is eighteen. You pass. All right. You will take half damage of one, so one point. Okay, cool. With my action, I'm going to cast Thunderstep, carrying me and one willing creature uh, of my size or smaller to a destination within 90 feet. So outside of this thing, standing up, and this thing must make a con save uh, versus DC 16. All right. Oh, it passes. All right, so it takes half of whatever I'm about to roll here. What kind of damage is this? Uh, This is sonic damage, thunder damage. Nine plus seven, so 16, 21, and we were talking about 31. It ta- so it takes half of 31. I think that's rounded up. 16. Yeah. Yeah, so 16. 16 sonic damage, and we are free. Oh, and you just hear a <laughs> from under it. <laughs> <laughs> Bunch of air escaping flesh. Who knew? Now, does that damage make it get bigger or smaller? Burp, burp, burp. Mm. Uh, well, hey, got you guys out. Still no, probably yeah. worth it. Not by much, but it's still it still kind of grew. Okay. It's still retaining its five feet. Oh, uh, the, the ten feet. All right. So. And it has to get its fat ass back up now. Yep. Yes, it does. <laughs> yeah, it's just eating pavement right now. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, for the, for the sake, I'll say we got ourselves 30 feet past it, because I can travel within 90 feet yeah, of yeah, it. Yeah, 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 that's fine. All right. Um, so would that make it my turn? Yep. All right. Yeah. So I imagine it probably fell on the, the piping hot medical braces, yes. but it's also been growing and shrinking since then. Can I see if it's still in contact with them? Oh, it's still there. It fell on it. Okay. Then, yeah. Bonus action. 2d8 fire damage. Hey, much better. 11. That's 22 damage. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Wall of hey. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of gas in there. It's like grilling a fucking burger. <laughs> yeah, basically you just hear a muffled explosion from under it as we <laughs> pop out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. At this point, I am going to, I'm gonna let the since it's not like we've been rolling a lot of attacks against it. I'm gonna let the fairy fire subside. And oh, actually no, that. That does not combo well. Hmm. Okay, so next question. Um, those... I'll, I will leave the fairy fire up, actually. The thing I was going to do would be a bad idea. Uh, so remember those radiant arrows we got, like, a couple sessions back? Yeah. Yep. I'm, I'm, I'm just load one up into my short bow and and pop that at it, see what it does. Either All right, using the short bow. Yeah. Yeah. That, that Count that on, like, one hand. Once, maybe, yeah. <laughs> All right, so... Natural wonders. Hey, <laughs> that was to hit. I'm. A... Yep. <laughs> yep. All right. Let me roll severity. Oh wait, don't you get a uh, uh, hit with advantage because fairy fire? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. Fairy fire. Yeah. So hey, 
very fuck that nat heavy. one unless you get it again. All right, Retcons. that's probably probably still a miss, but uh, that's a ten. Yo, this thing is this thing on is the ground. This thing is considered prone, so that hits. Yeah, hey. it's it's a pretty big slab of meat. All right, so then I'm going to do uh, five radiant damage to it. That leaves a sizable hole. You watch as the arrow dissipates, and it becomes like this. It almost becomes like this weird giant like ball of light. You know, like the the little laser that the things at Spencer's that you put your hand on it and it makes the little lightning streaks on it. Mm -hmm. It creates that. It dissipates, and there's just no flesh there whatsoever. Okay, these are cool. <laughs> so that was how much damage you said? Uh, four. No, five. Sorry. Five. So that was ten points one, of damage. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it is now its turn. <gasps> Sits back up again. <gasps> Takes its movement to do that. Looks at a lot of you. Gets mad and tries to do a sweeping blade. Ugh, fuck me. Nope. Stole a butt. Brave enfeeblement. Yeah. <laughs> well, half damage anyway. Half yeah. damage, yeah. If it hits. Oh, fuck me. I rolled a 19, not including its bonuses. Okay. Well, yeah, that'll hit. hit. That'll get That's us. That's a 25 to hit. That'll hit. Yep. Pretty, pretty, Everyone's uh... taking this. I think you got me. Pretty definitively, that hits. So everyone's taking a good chunk of this. Oh, Christ. All right. 14, so seven points of damage to everyone. Hey, could have been a lot worse. Could have been 14. Yeah. I saw it, so it's just going to be four. <laughs> you watch You watch as Frida takes a slash to the chest. You like. She sits there, looks down at herself. I felt that. <laughs> okay. Well, I heard that once, too. It was <laughs> I mean, less I'm flattering. <laughs> I'm going to roll. <laughs> she start, she, she's just ecstatic about this. Uh, it's not her turn yet, but this thing does have one more attack. It's not going to be... It, it retracts the thing again. I need everyone except for Eloy, since he's not in range of this, to roll a con save as this thing uh, belches in your face again. And the gas kind of expends out. Natural 20. Nice. Uh, for me, it was only an eight. For me, it was a Tuesday at the table. Frida is too ecstatic about the fact that she felt pain, that there's now room for growth. The pain can continue. Ezra's just sitting there like, oh, God, what is, what is this? <gasps> it left some meat on. Wait. You don't have a fear of bugs coming out of your flesh, do you? Well, uh, unfortunately, fear of bugs is right here on my, <laughs> on my paper. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and say Ezra, that, yeah, I've got a problem yeah, with this. Yeah, yeah, there's a there's a slab of meat that's, like, dabbed across Ezra's, like, face as the thing belched out. Just get it off, get it off, get it off! Yeah, oh, no, you get it off. Like, he, he gets, he lets go of it, but now there's, like, a cloud of that fog hazed around his head as he looks down. He's now grabbing at his flesh and pulling at it. He is now hallucinating that there are bugs coming out of his body. Okay, so I'm just flailing around, just, ah, get him off me! Yep, so roll me a wisdom save. 13. Use your weapon on yourself. Ah. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess I just do it. Turns around the crossbow. I'm gonna get him! <laughs> yeah. I got it! Not a ranged weapon, yeah. a melee yeah, of weapon. Course. Yeah. I'm going to be swinging with my dagger, I guess. Yep. So just swing it myself? Yep. Terrific. Hey, not one! I'm bad! Let me roll severity. I was going to say, this could go even worse, possibly. Yeah, how does a critical miss at hitting yourself work? <laughs> with a 33, that's pretty damn low. Add an extra d6 and make it a natural 20 in damage. Holy so shit. You're so... So wait. So, so add an extra d6. So, so you're doing. Four, so you're doing a crit and then double it. Okay. So, Jesus. So so do do its natural damage and then just double whatever I I roll plus a d6. Yeah. Okay. So, the dagger itself was just a one on the d4 so that's plus two. one, so two. So doubling that would be four. Yes. Okay. So four so far. Four and then, and then you add the and d6. Then the d6, which is another four. So would that be doubled as well? Yes. Or, okay. 
So, and would he so see 12. this coming? Yeah. Oh wait, no, you already no. used that for the. Uh, yeah. So I'm I'm adding so twelve damage. Yep. All together. So. Whew, I'm hurting, guys. With it, well, you are fucking screaming in absolute agony as you're seeing this worm-like creature crawl out of your body. You need to get rid of this thing now. This thing has to die. Yeah. And you, and you, wa- you guys watch as this cloud kind of like fogs over him. You see like this, almost like this congealing kind of flesh, almost like the same thing on the face, kind of like tumors over his body. It goes over his eyes. He looks down. He takes his knife and starts carving at his stomach. They kind of just looking at this like, to actually, each their own? This might actually put me over, because now that I think about it, I didn't add in proficiency to that. And if that also got uh, proficiency, no, no, does no, not no, get added no. to that's damage. Not, that's oh, not, oh, does yeah. it? Okay, yeah, only thank God. Okay, so yeah, okay. you're all right. Then never mind. I mean, for a certain value of all right. Yeah. But. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Dagon. Well, I have no way of helping that, so I'm going to run up to this wall and start hacking at it with Chick. Uh, with advantage, I mean, that would have hit anyway, but may as well try to get that 19, baby. That's hey, a crit. Uh, so crit will deal the... One, three plus five equals eight plus my... Sorry. Hexblade's Curse gives proficiency bonus to damage. That's yep. plus three damage. So that's... Tw- 12 plus, oh wait, sorry, I, 3 plus 9. Yeah, that's 12 plus 3 is 15 plus 5. Oh, or you hit it at that point. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm, I'm adding damage yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 12, 15, 20, and anything else could add to that? No. Uh, a total of 20 damage for that first attack. All righty. What type of uh, damage? Uh... Mostly magical slashing, and then pretty sure Hexblade's Curse does necrotic, so uh, three necrotic. Okay, that healed it, unfortunately. <laughs> ah, that's too bad. I-, I would suggest maybe not, though. <laughs> <laughs> does Hexblade's Curse does necrotic? Because I actually don't have it written down on here. I'll double check. I'll have to look that up. I will look that up. Oh, even so, it wasn't our discovery that anything but fire and healing was seeming to just give him temp points? I mean, yeah. it's still hurting it, no matter what. Okay. Like, damage is damage. It's just some of it's doing more and doing different effects. Or Anyway, second attack. <laughs> uh, not a crit, but a 24 will hit, I'm guessing. Uh, yeah, that'll hit. All right. Eight plus five, thirteen. Yeah, so that'd be an additional thirteen damage. Okay. Well, because it's magic, it's actually doing something. Okay. So. Yeah, that's thirteen okay. magical slashing. <clears throat> and then if I noticed that the necrotic damage was doing that, I'd be like, okay, let's back off on that one. Yeah. That healed it. Not not so much the magic damage. Okay, so it's really just mundane, non-fire damage that we need to try to avoid. Uh, Sorry, I'm still trying to find this ability. Yeah, sorry. You you good? Remember, chat, this is why I'm like... This is why we don't try to rules lawyer (laughs) super hard. Yeah. Yeah. It slows things down to a crawl. And you know what? Even if it doesn't work, this time I'm going to allow it. So. All right. It's fine. Do not do not worry about it. It's fine, chat. <laughs> and hey, if I suck as a GM, eh, you got him. Eh, compromise. G- a GM's rule is law. Yep. That is the way we always play it. Yep. yep. Do, 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 do. All right. We are now up to Ben's turn. Okay. So, let's see. I am over here stabbing myself, screaming about invisible bugs. <laughs> yep. Uh, also, I have clearly lost a lot of blood, so that screaming is probably now more like a panting. Just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so the the wall got up. Is it still uh, in contact with the medical bracers? No. No. Okay. That being the case, uh, oh shit. Hmm. Uh, 
it was in its eye and it blinked out. Yeah. yeah. No, even even still, no, I'm going to leave that up because there's no reason to, to let it go. Uh, I am going to use one of those lovely situational abilities that hasn't come up yet. I'm going to play a very soothing song. Soothing. <laughs> soothing, yeah, very soothing. Uh, <laughs> I feel better already, it's Ben. It's better than the spooky song. Yeah. <laughs> Ca- counter charm. Uh, friendlies within 30 feet... If I'm not within 30 feet of, uh, of Ezra, I'm going to you move are. within. You are. Uh, friendlies within 30 feet now have advantage to save versus being frightened or charmed. Hey! Cool. Uh, yeah. Alrighty. And, and actually, you know what? Ezra, shake it off! It's not real, man! You can do this! Bardic Inspiration. You've got a, a D8 that you can add. Uh, right. The worm is talking to you and saying that. <laughs> oh. and, it has, and it has floppy donkey ears. <laughs> I believe in you. You can get through this. I believe in you. Thank, 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 you. thanks. Shink! Ah! <laughs> I can't trust the words you say. <laughs> Off me, foul demon! Living Wall's turn. Living Wall notices that you ain't looking too hot, Ezra. Yep, yep. Hey, you know what? I don't blame him. It's not exactly like I'm hiding it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's like, ah, good. It's effect. It's he's afflicted. Pulls out the scythe. Not, not a whole lot I can do. This could get real bad. It doesn't sweep everyone. It goes for just him. I'm gonna say I'm directly under it. It'd be kind of hard to sweep me with that one. Yeah, no, no sweep. He, it's it's just a straight attack. Sweepy, no sweeping. Straight lunge with a fuck with a twenty-one to hit. Hey, that got me. Let's see what kind of damage this does. Also, am I distracted by the bugs? Can I see this? <laughs> I genuinely don't know how that rule will go, so that's why I'm asking. <laughs> you're feared, and unfortunately, you're kind of like Is that. Just uh, yeah, I get okay. Yeah, you're you're kind of like looking at this thing at this point. No, that's fine. If it was on your turn, you could roll to get out of it. But as of right now, that's that's the bullshit about this attack is that you're 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 kind of hexed on this. For... Tell, tell me what happens. <laughs> Let's see. Well, fuck me in the alley because I just rolled like the one of the lower outcomes possible. Okay. I rolled a one, two, three, four, four points of damage. <laughs> Teetering on that edge. That's a worm. Yeah. Ah, you're bringing your fucking friends, huh? <laughs> it will negate uh, its move to there's... attract, and then looks over to Dagon. Now, is that is that for pre or post uh, having from Raven Feeblement? That was a uh, Raven Feeblement, I believe. Would that have cut that down to? If it was a scythe attack, it would. It would. But I have so to also double be... check and see how long that duration is. How close to death am I? Mint. Ray of a feeble mint. Uh, I have to roll a con save. That's what. That's what. Yeah, you got to roll down. con saves ah, every turn. We roll a con save for him, and unfortunately, yeah. he's got very high con, which actually he doesn't beat. Hey! Oh, oh so hey. you only take two damage. Yep. Nice. Drop that back down to negative thirty-eight. Retracts. Looks down at Dagon. Just slicing out. Shink. Hello. Shink. <laughs> Opens its mouth and lets loose that gas. Roll a con save. Now is this that same frighten effect? Yes. If, okay, so you get advantage on this because yep. of my uh, counter charm. Don't think I'll need it. That's an 18 on the die and a 21. If I do need it, I'll roll it again. Yep, you you pass it. Okay. And that's its turn. All right. Just gonna smile at it. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Back to Frida, Frida looks over to the to the beast and she's just like. At last, with what I hate, my pain will. He looks over to he looks over to Ezra. <laughs> Still stabbing myself. Up. Die worm! Damn it! Like lifts open your mouth and pours down <laughs> for healing. Which kind of potion is it? Oh, it's just a regular healing potion. She, roll, so. she kind of used her moderate to attack this thing. Okay. But then she also... I'm going to do something else along with this because that was just a potion she used. Okay. Uh, you are getting back 8 HP. Okay. 
And now she will use pretty much, I forget what the name of it's called because I have it written down here, but uh, death, palad uh, death Domain Clerics don't get Healing Word, but they get like the necromancy version of this. So again, she just takes the knife, looks over to you, looks over to your cut. Now the bugs are over here! Do you feel? <laughs> ah! That actually solderized the wound as I'm closing it up for... Holy fuck. All right, cool. Solderizing it for 14 points of uh, healing. I love the... I was, I was going to say, I love the combination of soldering and cauterizing. <laughs> soldering and cauterizing, sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. No, she sees it's your body as just this biological machine. <laughs> yeah. It's a good portmanteau. Yeah. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, <laughs> even unintentional, I think it's, yeah, it's good. it's real good. <laughs> I mean, that's what she thinks she's doing. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it helped me back way the fuck off from death's door, so yeah. I'm cool with that. Yep, that's her turn. Now it's up to you, actually. Roll a wisdom save with advantage. I thought you were going before me. How'd you, how'd you roll before you? Oh, wait, yeah, no, no never I'm mind. She was me. last, that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah Frida's so, last. Sorry, yeah, it, it back up the list. went all the way back around. Yep. My bad. Ugh. Um, all together, it would be a 16. 16. You pass. All right. As the as you, you feel like something on your eyes, you're like, what the fuck is it? It's like when you wake up and there's sand in your eyes. Ah. Like, what the fuck? Oh. That was fucked up. You look down at yourself, and there's there, there's Frida just, like, taking the knife from your gut. Oh, was that? Thank you. I feel better than I did before, whatever that was. She's, like, she's like wiping... She's wiping the blood off the your blood off the blade delicately. No problem. All right. Uh, looks over. <laughs> looks over. Back. Back in uh, the fray. Back. Back in the fray. You're very close to this thing, right? I am in its face. Yes. All right, then. Yeah. Then I'm probably not gonna throw an explosive over there. Uh, do I have? That being said, it is a wide creature. You can shoot part of it. That's true. No, it has to be right above your head. Hold still. Yeah. Yeah, you have to William tell me. <laughs> William tell me before you fire. I mean, did you pick up any of those radiant bolts? I don't think so. I don't remember if I wrote that down. Congratulations, you found the reason why I gave you those in the first place. I, I, I sort of figured. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I wrote them down. They seemed real useful. Listen, man, Gustav's been working hard, and he wants to workshop what he's got for you guys. Oh, that does sound sick. I mean, I'm pretty sure he gave them to all of us. Yeah, I thought he did, and I, I'm just not seeing it on my page anywhere. So maybe you, maybe you took them all just to. Oh well. Either way, going with something that I know I still have. Uh, I still have another healing potion. Although that doesn't do jack <clears throat> shit with the just regular one for me. So, hey, you know what? Instead. I'm just gonna do that crossbow attack with an explosive bolt, just aiming away from where Dagon is. So, uh, and is he still fairy fired? Yes. Okay. Hey, got the same thing. So uh, that's why I've been staying well back yeah. to try and <laughs> not get um, 19 to hit. That'll hit. All right. The thing about living walls, they're very easy to hit, because they are, in fact, a living fucking yeah, wall. Yeah, turns out, they're just right there. Uh, just the just the bolt uh, does, does six damage. And, six healing. Yes. Uh, and I guess that explosion won't go off till my next turn, so. Yep. But it's just stuck in there. You watch as the, the flesh kind of, like, congeals around it and pulls it in. Uh, and I'm going to back off, because I've uh, had a rough <laughs> time in this fight. Ezra would just be like, hey, you know what? Seems like nothing's happened to the guys who are far away, <laughs> and uh, I keep shooting it. <laughs> Being up front seems like a bad idea. All right, so that's your turn? Yes. All right, your turn. All right, I looked it up. Uh, apparently, the bonus damage is just whatever the hell the sword's doing. Oh, it's okay. It's nothing special. Fair enough. All right, so I'm going to continue hacking at him. As he is still my target. Thank God for fairy fire, because that would have been pretty rough. Uh, 21. That'll hit. Or, sorry, 22, actually, but still hits. 
Damage. I gave I gave you guys the pen ultimate monster. I gave you a monster you absolutely could hit, but do you want to? <laughs> With my magic weapon, I do. With a magic weapon, you do, yes. All right, so that's seven plus three plus five. So that's 15 damage for the first attack. All righty. Again, magical slashing for the sake of damage. 18, come on, give me that. Ah, damn. Oh, well. Uh, 27 to hit will almost certainly hit. Nine plus three plus five. 12. 17 damage. You watch as Dagon cleaves Chick into, the, yeah. into this thing. It cuts across the mouth. You want to know how I got these scars? <laughs> <laughs> Is it still alive? It stops moving, begins to rattle, and you watch as it kind of, like, detaches itself with this with the ropey sinew kind of sound as, like, it all kind of whips together, starts flailing about, and then it just cut, kind of congeals until it's just a small head with the blade stuck in between, like, in its mouth, and it's on Dagon's sword. Oh, it is chick, dead. Eat up, and I gain bon temporary, or I gain, uh... Temporary hit points equal to half my warlock level plus charisma. All so right. that's nice. As Chick consumes whatever soul remains in this thing. Alrighty. And I will say this for the chat at home. That's fluff. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't, do not fester. He's not actually getting any bonus for eating a soul. We're calling that for fluff. Oh, uh, no, that's good. that's just Hexblade's curse. It's uh, if a target dies, I gain it. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. The, No, but like the soul sucking thing. We have fluff reasons for that, and trust me, it's going to be good. Yeah, Ooh. there are fluff reasons for that. My in my in universe reasons are the stronger chick gets, the stronger Dagon gets. So that's how I work leveling up. Yeah, gotcha. So, do not fester. And plus, it also has a very good story plot that I wish to do in the future. But Nick doesn't know. I don't know all the Ooh. things. I just told him what I wanted to do, and he's like, "Yes," and I'm like, <laughs> "That's a good response." <laughs> yep. <laughs> all right. So, congratulations. It is dead. All right, oh. Dagon just kind of sits down. Oh, I wish I had saved that cigarette. Uh, yeah, Dagon is <laughs> below half health. <laughs> uh, after getting healed by Frida, Frida can heal I've... you guys two more times with how much magic she has. Well, I'm, I'm hurting, but not in a terrible place. So if you guys need it more, or if she needs it, I... depending on who's been hit with I... what. I, I, I got this one, Frida. You, you've been, you've been doing a lot of healing. I'm gonna. Gonna cast. She looks over at you just like you said a curse word to her. Don't say that. <laughs> I'm sorry. You've been causing a lot of pain, which is good because ah, I, much I don't better. understand your, why. Your but pain I'll just... therapy has been working wonders. A lot of that good feeling pain. Yeah. <laughs> it's hurt so good, dear. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so yeah, I cast an aura of vitality uh, over the over the next minute. I do uh, twenty d six worth of healing, which. Should be sufficient to bring us pretty much. I would up to full. assume. Like I can roll it if we want. But. Oh yeah, yeah, but no, it's fine. So for that minute, you guys. Even if we just take the average of it, I'd, I'm fine. Yeah. Even if we just take ones on it, if you <laughs> rolled nothing but ones, I'd be almost at full. So a few minutes have passed by in this fight. Uh, by now, the people who you were chasing have immediately got way yeah, they've, they've, ahead of they've you. probably gotten pretty far. So I think they know that we're coming. Yeah. Uh, I also have a feeling that they. We're ready for someone to chase them with how many traps were here. I don't think these were things that they just were dropping on the way. Oh, by the way, when uh, the head finally, like, you see the head on his sword, it turns into dried blood, and sure enough, there's that ring that cracks sitting on your sword's blade. I'm really starting to hate those things. I don't know. We only see them once we've just done a good. It's like the worst prize at the bottom of a box of snacks. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Captain, if you don't mind me saying, I'm quite happy with the results of my trials here. I've learned there's much more to be done with my uh, my sensories, and this whole entire experience has opened the way for many ways to feel pain. Well, hey, learning new ways to hurt yourself is kind of what the natural wonders are all about, so uh, <laughs> thanks for coming along. <laughs> You've got a very positive outlook on things, Frida. <laughs> I like that. Indeed. She just, you just, you, again, like Morticia, Morticia Adams just like <laughs> floats by. Indeed. 
She's ne- wonderful, negative isn't outlook? She? Is, is negative good for her? I, I don't know how these things work. She spins it in a way that is good for her. She seemed happy when I said that. That's yeah. all I want. Oh, no, you're saying all the right things right now. <laughs> I guess we would... Just, I know that they've probably gotten far away or maybe even escaped this city, but... Uh, well, with that, you guys hear a shrill street, uh, shriek all the way ahead of you. It sounded like an old man shriek. Well, that's Let, probably our cue. Sounds right. <laughs> Let's go save the day, I guess. <laughs> Some more. Start booking it that way. Start yeah. booking it that way. All right. Uh, about five minutes of you running down the street, you kind of like don't notice a lot until finally uh, you're now at the actual gate. The west side gate is now here. Uh, it's kind of strange considering that no one's around to really like assist in this, especially with all the sphinxes and the ASMR that were here once before. So the fact that they're all gone is kind of concerning, but that, that scream kind of came, it went even further down. I'm not too surprised there aren't that many people here. We did just deal with a massive flesh wall. There's that, and also, they've probably been posting extra guards near the paper... uh, Wasp. Paper wasp. wasp. I was going to call it the paper mosquito, and I knew that was wrong. Uh, (laughs) Roll a perception check to see if you could pinpoint which way that scream came from. I don't. Another nat one for me! Natural wonders. 24. Uh, Modified 20. Let me roll for Frida. This is probably my favorite looking dice, but I feel like I get nat ones on it so Eloy. much. Yeah. You feel like like your donkey ears kind of like siphoned through the air like a radar dish. <laughs> that way. It went that way, boys. So you guys follow after Eloy as he leads the pack. You get him, ne- boy. Yeah. <laughs> get him, boy. What are your donkey ears here, my friend? <laughs> you guys are reaching a dead end, and now there's... There's a crew of those boys standing in the middle of the st- in the middle of the alleyway, as they see- they all appear to be standing in like a diamond formation that's kind of like half a- that's closing off the street. They turn and look to you. In the Please back don't start of- snapping. Yep. Yep. <laughs> uh, likely West Side Story. <laughs> they turn around and look to you. They leave a space open. There's a Luxodon all the way in the back of the corner, and another robed figure who has a sword at the ready, pointed at the other at the other cloaked figures. She's with this creature looks like its form is female from the fitting of the suit, uh, the fitting of the cloak. She's holding out a rapier, and she looks to the lot of you. Wait, you're not Gar... Oh, to hell with it. Do something. Help us out here. You got it. Chick, help the lady. <laughs> and I just point at a couple of the uh, vampires in a diamond formation, just a fire, uh, Eldritch Blasts. Well, actually, that was going to be my pinpoint for us to stop for the night. <laughs> well, that, well, that is where I... Well, that was like, chick, get him. <laughs> There's our cliffhanger. Yep. yep, so at this point, we're, we're going to stop here. I feel a natural stopping point would be that you finally reach your Luxodon friend. It's another what looks like Teller in like very nice, elaborate robes. He's not really, really old like Khan was. He... He's just moderately really old. No, no, he's not moderately really old. He, he looks way younger than Khan does. He, he doesn't need a cane to walk around. He doesn't look like he's feeble or frail. He looks like he's capable of taking care of himself. His horn, his tusks are actually corkscrewed up in the uh, up to this top uh, to the top of his head, and his ears are adorned with rubies. So this guy Ooh. looks like he's got prestige on him. This other woman, though, like she looks like she was kind of infiltrating because she's wearing like the same cloak, but it almost looks like it's a different kind of shade that the other uh, vampires in the diamond formation are standing in. <laughs> she turns and looks to you. Like you don't see her face, but you see her hand pull, uh, reached out. She almost looks like she has the same uh, skin complexion as Frida does. Okay. Right. Like that's well, the most you have out of that. Dagon's all about helping the ladies. Yep. And we'll deal with that next time at the table. Woo! hey But before we go, we got some art to look at, boys. Oh, boy. Fan we got art? some fan art. Fantastic, Fantastic art. Yes. Yes. Indeed. <laughs> Let me pull open Twitter once it decides that it wants uh, to load up on my phone. I'm sure we state this all the time, but just on the off chance that someone creates fan art and has no idea where to send it to get our attention. Well, you can always use the hashtag TFS fan art, <gasps> where the at TFS fan art <laughs> Twitter account will retweet it, and sometimes the Team Four Star account in general. You can hashtag Ooh. it, you can add it, so long as TFS fan art is the destination. Mm-hmm. 
All right. Well, Whatever number one on the <laughs> list. Boom. Celebrating Whoa. the one year anniversary of TFS at the Holy table. Holy shit. Yeah. It's been a year. Have I been playing D&D for a year? You have been playing D&D &D for a whole year. <laughs> Snuck right up on. Hey, don't feel bad. I realized about halfway through that fight, you know what it you know what that thing is is made of metal that it can't drop? That fucking scythe that's part of it. <laughs> oh right. <laughs> Well, this here was made by the wonderful Marvel Poison, and Grammy baked us a cake, boys. Look at all those trout heads just sticking out Tell there. The secret ingredient. It, it was guppies. Love. It was guppies. You got it, Ezra. Oh my gosh, it was love this time. Or time. But this one, one time only, I cook it with love. Thank you so much, Marvel Poison, for the lovely celebration of our one year anniversary here at the table. And next up, by Caitlin C37, whose commissions are open. We got some Dagon, chilling there. Ooh. He looks sort like he's of like really over it. <laughs> he's just like, that, I feel like yep. that's him staring at the thing as it's burping at him, like. <laughs> really, really. Oh, cover your <laughs> fucking you mouth, Ethan. In my face, <laughs> directly there. Then, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> Nearly guys, crushed every bone in my body, you, you son guys of a bitch. Are lucky, because if that thing was able to hit you while you were still under it, that would have been the scythe directly on top. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. Well, that's why I got us out of there. I'm like, you know, it's probably bad that this yeah. thing has this, like, good Been call. Trapped. Yep. So I'll just burn my other spell for the night. <laughs> Flesh golems, man. Yeah. I, the, this, the, the whole fucking monster ensemble of fresh, uh, flesh golems. But thank you kindly, Caitlin C37, who also does a lot of wonderful work for me over on Roll With Me. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. Next up, <laughs> we got the boys. Yeah. Yeah. Three Tra wise men. <laughs> traveling through the desert by Slug Bunnies. I, lo I, lo I love the uh, J.J. Abrams solar flare going. Yeah, no, that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> All right, so who in this picture is Gold, Frankincense, and Myrrh? <laughs> uh... I would absolutely bring whatever the cheapest gift is. <laughs> so I don't know how much myrrh costs. Yeah, that's that's. I'm not sure what the exchange rate is at this point. Frankincense would have been the lesser. All right, then uh, Dagon would be myrrh, and Eloy's the very generous one that would bring gold. <laughs> yep. I mean that that golem looked like a frankincense monster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's Dagon riding meat, uh, rip meat, F for meat, M for meat, whatever you want to say, <laughs> but uh, meat did not make it. Poor and now meat. now poor meat has a picture. <laughs> We, we now have a face to meet. Put this up on the wiki. Uh, just a whole page to meet. Rip meat. <laughs> <laughs> meet Thank you kindly, Slug Bunnies, whose commissions, again, are open. Meat was a good camel, presumed to have lived between the years. <laughs> 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 While not Meat's original name, it... <laughs> It became known. Anyway, next up. Two days of retirement till retirement. We got me. memes, boys. Ooh! We got memes. Bongo Eloy. I shall play you the song of my people. Baziga Exeron. <laughs> dum, 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 dum. I need an animated version of that, that is, in my life. That is adorable. Oh my yeah, God. Yeah, ba Bongo Eloy is adorable. <laughs> it's just little face. <laughs> I'll play you the song of my people. Oh, wait, I got a nat one. There's Ezra. <laughs> <laughs> Just bring yeah, gets in that one. Now that ghost is scared to death. He's <laughs> <laughs> gonna say he gets in that one, punches straight through the lid of the bongo. Oh shoot! <laughs> Thank you kindly, Ziga Exeron, Caesar Morales. Next up, by Harkin Christian, Ooh. we got Griorchik das was was fafanir. It's a pinup of Griorchik. Yeah, this is my <laughs> this is my companion, Griorchik the All Gobbler. He doesn't like my translation. He's in the modeling career. Look at this shit. He's, he's ready to go. <laughs> give, the, give, this, give this sword a pair of jeans. Only in one leg. Yeah, he's I, ready to go. If it was I have more jeans. I it, have a whole shtick prepared for if anybody ever asks me about, like, you know, well, what, 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 why doesn't he like it? What is, what's wrong with it? What, he's, what do you call him? Exactly. <laughs> I have an entire shtick for that. <laughs> It's one of the first things I came up with when I was coming up with the concept for the character. <laughs> <And> unfortunately <laughs> for you, all of us just immediately believed you. You were like, yeah, yep. it's, oh, it's no problem. Sounds right. <laughs> I mean, you're at level six now, and at this point, like, the world, like, 
Level one to five is a town knows about you. Level one to level five to ten is the world knows about you. And yeah, nations and stuff. Yeah, your, and then eleven heroes. to fifteen is the gods know about yeah, you. The gods are starting to take notes. Like, what the fuck are they doing? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you kindly, Harkin Christian. Next up, by Alejandro <laughs> Tora or Toro or the ATS ninety nine. We got Murloc Wake. <laughs> A sound I only know because of your Hearthstone addiction. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Wait, weren't you one of the people that went and saw the Warcraft movie with us? That really, I really did see bad that movie, Warcraft yes. movie? Okay, yeah. I did see that, so fair enough. I probably heard it there for, before. Well, no, I think that you were playing. You Good. probably thought I was, it was I, I only saw World of, I only saw the Warcraft movie because I played Hearthstone. Yeah, so, yes. so I would have heard that. The there. only thing I can think of is now that since you had no like idea about the Murlocs and you heard that sound on the actual like thing and you didn't parse it together, that's just like the Wilhelm scream of Warcraft. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> kind of is. Yeah, I I I played like I did like the tutorial of Hearthstone after you and Kieran were both like playing it a ton. So I've seen Murlocs now and yeah. understand that that's what they're that's what he was making that sound. But yeah. The ATS 99, whose commissions are open. Thank you so much. He looks wonderful. Yes. I'd run him in a deck. And Probably next up. Probably broken as shit. The I -E. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We got two memes. More memes. <laughs> Wait, watch out. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Damn it, Ezra. <laughs> Fuck. Meanwhile. <laughs> So I'd like to imagine that that shot was fired from Ibercall. <laughs> Look out! So Look out! <laughs> oh! <laughs> I was half expecting if I nat one on that uh, on that bolt for Wake to just dive out and be like, "Hey guys, I'm here to oh no, I gotta go and tend to this bolt." <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> ow! 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 It's good to see you, Wake. But thank you kindly, Gitazik98, whose commissions are open for the wonderful, wonderful work. They do they do a lot of great little comics yeah. and they stuff like that. They got, they got a great Spider G uh, Spider Jeets thing going on yeah. right now for my Renegade playthrough. Next up, by Tanuki. There we go. We have Prince Ezra Abubu. <laughs> <laughs> Prince nice. Ali Prince Ali Lockwood. Mighty is he, Ali Lockwood. Now you just need a genie. <laughs> we already got legitimate Larry. Yeah. yeah. You ain't never had a friend like him. <laughs> He's the most legit friend. But thank you kindly, Tunuki. 10,000 years, this root trait. <laughs> For the Ali Abubu. <laughs> and speaking of Ezra, up next, by Red Flame Kitty, yeah! we got Ringmaster Ooh. Ezra, the Pokemon trainer, <laughs> with his Haunter, uh, Luxray, and... Pyro. A Pyroar. So his his haunter is Scaffy, yeah? It's got the it haunted be. hand. I, yeah, I, it's, I, it's, it's it. coming out of the hat. Yeah, that, that is how the ringmaster do. That said, if fucking Mr. Rattles traded it to me, wouldn't it have evolved into a Ooh. Gengar? <laughs> but thank you kindly, Red Flame Kitty, whose commissions oh. are open and does amazing, amazing stuff. I, I love this. It looks great. Nah, it's beautiful. I've loved all the stuff they have thrown forward at we us so far. We haven't had many chances to just be a fucking circus. So no, I love absolutely. Whenever it, when, I love whenever I see that. Next up, by Scrap Paper 22, we have Jillian Harvest and her stand uh, with four different bodies. I'm guessing, um, oh, who, who, who was it in part three that had the uh, many different forms of their stand? Oh, uh, I can't remember his name. Koichi. Koichi. The but kid. isn't there, wait, it's the guy in the next one, though. I forget his name off the top of my head, but it's the guy who has the, the sex pistols. Oh, oh yeah. okay. I'm I'm not I'm not familiar with part five. Yeah, I was well, thinking Koichi who had the sound one. That yeah, kept because evolving. all all the Sex Pistols had numbers on them, so I'm ah, just like, I think it pays homage okay. to that more. Gotcha. Let's see, what would it be here? Uh, Seasons of Change. Yeah. Oh, we had. I feel be like her stand. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I there's that Dream Theater song. I think it's just called Seasons. <laughs> Oh, uh, they have it written down here that it would be Woodstock. You got Springstock, ah. Summerstock, Fallstock, and Winterstock. Nice. All right. I like it. But thank you that. kindly. Scrap Paper 22. Wake as an me. elementalist, would his stand be Earth, Wind, and Fire? Mm, mm. I like that. Mm. Next up, by MFS Arts. Could not include this one. We got the Funeral Pyre and all the Saturday Morning Wonders, including the most jawsome of Fliskins. <laughs> 
I like that Eloy's got his guitar there, just like jamming out to it. Just like, like, here's my dirge. Like the most somber jam. Yeah, <laughs> I I saw this one on Twitter earlier, and this is another one of those that you can just zoom in and get mm-hmm. just as get deep so as many you more want. Details, yeah. Yeah. One, one of my one of my favorite little details is now that Wake is in training with his turtle brother, he's got a turtle shell on his back. Oh, that's good. Wear the cloak of burden. <laughs> uh, it weighs <laughs> seventy pounds. <laughs> They get heavier as you go. Uh, that's attach supposed to the, encourage me? <laughs> attach the stone of triumph. Oh. Yay, 100 pounds. Oh. <laughs> but thank you so much, MFS Arts. I know we will look at this a lot more on Friday if we didn't last Friday. I think we did. We, well, exactly good, because it's really fucking yeah. good. Next up, by uh, at the Mega Geeko. Got an awesome be- Slav squatting battle ready Nedra. I love that big <laughs> smile. Yeah. I can't tell what she has in her hand, but it, I, that's that's her tail. It's 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 uh, oh, wrapping around God. that way. Okay, okay, okay. For the longest time I looked at it, I thought it was like the one end blade of a fidget spinner or a shuriken. She's <laughs> holding a pin. Nah, she's just, she's it's just the like the tail. Now I see it. Okay. Yeah, she yeah. she's just doing a nice flex. Like, hey, you want some of this? Yeah. And it's like you don't, but you're getting it anyway. <laughs> This is by Emma. This ask. Yeah, Emma at the Mega Geeko, whose commissions are open. I like and Big Braid Nedra. You don't see that a lot. Nedra, yeah. yeah. Or uh, Nedra, yeah. Yeah. No, don't worry. We've been, we've been at this I all have day. Braids all yeah. the time. <laughs> but thank you kindly for the wonderful, wonderful stuff. And I do believe that is it for awesome. today. Thank you so much for joining us, guys. We will see you guys next time at the table. Have a wonderful week. Thank Woo! you. Thank you for the year. Uh, I'm turning, yes, yeah. I, I am, ha- happy birthday. Yeah, happy birthday. Speaking of which, I'm turning 30 on Friday. <laughs> happy birthday! <laughs> a birthday <laughs> is a doodly-doo, Nick. A ding-dong doodle, a ding-dong-doo. Come here, birthday! Birthday! <laughs> <laughs>